Welcome to the Hyder Radio Podcast. The horror Halloween edition. Spooky. What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? More sound effects coming. More sound effects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very spooky. (laughs) Very horrific. Very cryptic. All right. All right. All right. Everyone sit down. We got a lot of stuff to get to tonight. All right. So... What's up, everybody? This is Drell on the High Radio Podcast, and this is our Halloween spooktacular episode. <laughs> and, and you hear me uh, uh, loud and clear. I don't have a really horrific name, but I got my my horror friend over here, Drew, co-host. How you doing, Drew? I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Bad Bella Lugosi impressions. Yes, yes. This is going to be a great show, a great show. We are going to talk lots of Halloween, and we're going to review lots of scary uh, movies as well as scary albums, which we normally do regular albums on this show, but today we got the some... The scariest like, album of all we reviewed last time. Yes. And that was <laughs> the, the Fergie. New, new Fergie. <laughs> now it's going to get a lot more scary or a lot less. Who knows? We got the new one from Marilyn Manson, who is pro- really appropriate for Halloween. We're going to talk about that new one he just dropped. Also, we're going to get really sinister with the Cradle of Filth album that came out there many, many albums in. And I'm really looking yeah. forward. <laughs> yeah. Let's get in another sound effect. I already got it here. Yeah! Yes. Filth! Yes. Cradle of Filth. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking that with you because um, Drew is not only big in the horror movies, even though you denounce it so hard. You're also into a lot of like metal and stuff like that. And I think that a band like Cradle of Filth is right up your alley, especially with the name and all. Like obituary, I stuff am like pretty that. filthy. So, <laughs> yes. um, and also we're gonna do the latest one from August Burns Red. So three metal bands. It's gonna be great. In this, in this episode, they're gonna be go by October Burns Red, <laughs> <laughs> October Burns Orange and Black. Yes. All right. So uh, also we are gonna talk about our favorite. That's the fast, fast as it goes, man. Uh, Drew's trying to turn the fan a little faster, but it's I'm not. afraid I'm going to get de- decapitated. I want it down. <laughs> oh, it's too. You're cold. It's too much. Okay, you can just there. there's a there's a you get you guys can't see at home, but there's uh, <laughs> we're actually taping this from a an old gothic castle. <laughs> and we moved the high radio studios to a gothic castle. Yes, just for Halloween. Mm. Uh so uh, I'm actually. That's interesting. I'll get to what we're going to talk about in a second, but um, <clears throat> we're going to talk Halloween, our favorite Halloween, like you know, moments, in you know, and we're going to talk about our least favorite Halloween moments. We're going to talk about the origin of Halloween to us, anyway. We're not going to go all the way back to the 1600s, but we will talk Halloween for you guys. Also, we are going to get even deeper in Halloween by letting Drew do another ranking. This time, yeah. it's, he's going to rank all. All of the Halloween films. And I have a feeling that Jarrell's not going to like it, because we were talking about this earlier, <laughs> and he has some very strong opinions on a certain Halloween movie yes. that we're going to get into. We actually are not going to talk about the uh, Rob Zombie ones. We're just going to do the classic ones. because oh, i, I got to like, revise my list then. Uh, you want to do those? Yeah, I'm cool. going to do them. Okay. Uh, I thought we were going to do just eight, but we're, apparently we're going to do all ten Halloween movies. All, all ten. ten. All right. So here we, we don't do anything half-assed here at Hybrid Radio. <laughs> exactly. And we, we are full-assed on the Halloween front. <laughs> and I'm going to get into the Halloween magic as well, and I'm going to talk to you guys about what you should have on your playlist for party music for your Halloween parties, as well as the films you play in the background during the Halloween parties. Uh, a lot of people, you know, doing the Halloween parties as it gets closer to the, the actual event. And you want to have some good music playing in the background. You want to have some good movies that people can look at. And you also got to cater to the right time of the night for the certain movies you play. So, like I said, a jam-packed show, and I'm glad you guys came out. How you doing? So first, let's get into what we're drinking tonight. Tonight, I figured we might as well get into the spirit for Halloween and drink something that's either October related or something pumpkin related. So I picked up some Samuel Adams Oktoberfest, which I never tried before. My dad's a big Samuel fan, Adams fan. I'm not. Um, we'll see uh, if I actually like this flavor that they have going. But it probably tastes the exact same, but it just says October on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can talk first uh, hand experience because I've been drinking October uh, Sam Adams Oktoberfest uh, since uh, late August. Oh, that that's that recent. I thought you were gonna say yeah. Stella Lad <laughs> since I was um, a baby. 
<laughs> well, I mean, since since uh, it came out this year, at okay. least. I've drank, drank it in previous years. Uh, Sam Adams is by far not the best beer manufacturer, but they're always solid. Uh, if I see uh, Sam Adams on a, a menu and... Uh, it's between that and let's say a Heineken or a Budweiser or something. It's yeah, no even no no, no contest. Yeah. yeah, Sam Adams was every time. I'm like the opposite of him. I like my watery like beer, so I drink the I drink the lights because I I I try to tell myself trying to keep his girlish figure. Yeah, exactly. I try to tell myself that's the way it's going to work, but it's similar to like drinking diet soda. It's not true. Yeah, you just <laughs> drink more of it. Yeah. Um, and though, but at the same time, they usually have the bargains for those, so that's why I do. <laughs> I buy them, so you know, you get the three dollar like Bud Lights uh, specials when you go to happy hours at bars. So I'm like, hell yeah, I'll drink like that. But that's the plan, like you said, Drew. They just know you're gonna drink twice as much Shovel anyway. Shovel them down your throat hole. Yeah. Um, and then what Drew brought today? Um, I was looking all over for some pumpkin beer lagers, but that seemed to not exist. Oh, me too. I've been... Uh, in years past, I go ape shit on pumpkin beers. I start drinking pumpkin beers in late September. I Usually, at this point, I've sampled at least five. This year, not so much. Um, I uh, The only new ones that I haven't tried are this one and um, an- another company... Um, I can't even remember the name of it now. Mm. Uh, Otafi. O- okay. Oto. O- 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 some. Some craft. Oh, something. Something. O- German. Oh, something or other. <laughs> yeah. A very Irish sounding. Oh, Irish. Okay. Um, but yeah, I f- this is. I feel like there's a war on Halloween. I feel like there's a war on the fall. I don't know if it's just uh, <laughs> the weather has started. It first of all. Well, yeah. <laughs> Global warming started it, I think, and then uh, I don't know. Maybe the uh, pumpkin spice has over been oversaturated, and people are getting sick of uh, all things Halloween. <laughs> What you bought today is uh, some dogfish head pumpkin ale. New Jersey's which, own. Yes. So I'm going to try it for the first time, being that I hate ales, uh, especially the pale ale. You know, if you've seen the... <laughs> you might like this one. I hate pale ales, too. This is a brown ale, so this okay. is closer to a lager, I think. So, all right, let's give it a try. It's my first time with some pumpkin ale. Tis the season, and I'll, right? And I'll, uh, I'll read the ad copy. It's all a right. fall favorite. Full body brown ale. It's brewed with real pumpkin, brown sugar, allspice, cinnamon, and nutmeg. 7% alcohol by volume. Dogfish right. head. Pumpkin so ale. I just took a swig and I don't taste a, a single amount of pumpkin. Wait. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <There's> a, <laughs> His eyes just got wide. He's like, <laughs> It was like a, a religious experience. He saw a different dimension. <laughs> yeah. The pumpkin dimension. It's the, it's the great pumpkin ale. <laughs> true, true. <Durell> stall. <laughs> You've been out for like three hours, man. You didn't, it just felt like a minute. <laughs> this has been like the longest dead air in history. But yeah, it's it's not bad. I don't taste the actual shark itself, but... It's in there. The, it's real <laughs> the shark, shark fin, actually. <laughs> it's harvested from uh, blue sharks, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. The shark. Ugh. Uh, that second squig. It's really harsh, but... You know what's funny? When it comes to beer, I will drink it. <laughs> you know, um, but I got my rum and coke on the side as an emergency, and just ca- just in case I want to like cl- cleanse the palate. You know. <laughs> um, so Drew was saying before that the war on Halloween, and first of all, it is October twenty uh, second as we're recording this show, two thousand seventeen, the year of our uh, Dark Lord, and it is hot as balls outside. And I'm surprised you're wearing this long sleeve shirt right now. But you said that you don't like the the cold. For Here's the thing about global warming that nobody warned us about. It's <laughs> except hot for, uh, as Al shit. Gore. <laughs> it, well, yeah, except for Al Gore and and the entire scientific community. And a day to, uh, the day after tomorrow, <laughs> and, the movie and, yeah. and, Ro- and Roland Emmerich. Yeah, they all no, told th- us this specific thing mm. where it's hot as shit all day long, and then it just drops off at night. Yeah. Yesterday, I went to a flea market, uh. and I was like, I'm going to wear my long sleeve, because I had been stockpiling long sleeves uh, <laughs> over the summer, because in pre- for this previous <laughs> years, I'm a short sleeve guy all the way, Yeah, um, because you buy a short sleeve shirt, you can year- wear it uh, year round, but I didn't... Plus, you can show off the I, guns. I didn't... That too. Yeah. Um, I didn't count on getting <sighs> old and just getting cold all the time, <laughs> so I'll go out to a restaurant, I'll take my jacket off, I got my... my black t-shirt on yeah and i'm just cold as shit so i said not not anymore i'm doing long sleeves this year mm. just if it still feels like summer yeah yeah and it's like really like summer right now it's 80 degrees i took my kid out to, to this the park today and it's just like shorts and stuff like that but now but yesterday i i was walking around i had my long sleeves on yeah. i was like it's gonna be cool I, I left the house earlier in the day it was 50 degrees i was actually kind of chilly yeah i get to the flea market 
fucking 80 degrees. <laughs> and then uh, on the way home, it was uh, I was still hot. We had the AC on. Get out of the car once I get home. 65 degrees. The fuck is that? <laughs> what the hell's going on, man? That's why everyone's getting sick here and there. But I'm going to be honest with you. I love global warming because I look good in shorts, y'all. Um, and <laughs> well, I mean, well... <laughs> At least President one of us company does that. not agree it, <laughs> but I, I um, it's it's good to love yourself because yeah, if you don't love yourself, how can you love anybody else? Yeah, uh, at the same time is uh, the, the the global warming when it really takes effect, I will be long gone anyway. So fuck everybody in the future. Um, also <laughs> says the man with three children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll be dead by then too. <laughs> at least if things work right my way. Uh, um, He's also, slowly been poisoning them for years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, what's going on is with uh, this season, Halloween, as we mentioned, you're, this is like, beside the weather, is this like your, is your favorite time of year because of why? Why do you love Halloween so much? Partially the weather. Mm. Also, my birthday is yeah. in October. It was all um, all worked out. That's yeah, the way it was planned. I, I, it was predestined. <laughs> I'm a horror movie fan, and this is the only year where it just feels like you're in a horror movie. Yeah. You go into every store, at least in years in the past, and there's spooky displays. Oh, yeah. ghosts. And, and you walk into stores, and they have decorations. Oh, my God, there's <laughs> cobwebs. And it's just yeah. fun. And I get to uh, enjoy the weather, uh, drink... Um, Pumpkin, pumpkin drinks. Um, here's some of these scary sound effects. Here's scary sound effects. <laughs> watch, watch horror movies with my loved ones. Uh, in years past, go trick or treating. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a fun time. It's festive. It's festive in a way that Christmas is kind of not almost. But speaking of Christmas, where I work now, now they're now as the years have gone on, they've been pushing Christmas over Halloween. It's getting to a point where in this year I th- I feel like it was the tipping point where um I don't know. Like I feel like I feel like there's a legitimate war on Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um the displays have been all smaller. The gr- Christmas displays are coming out sooner and sooner. I started yeah. seeing Christmas displays at late August, early September mm-hmm. and by the time October hits, the Christmas display is actually bigger than the Halloween display. Yeah, that's what gets to my point. With that, beside the weather alone, um, I'm not feeling like the Christ- the Halloween spirit as I did in the past. Yeah. Maybe because like when it comes to Halloween around this time of year, it's it's got that chill, that that eerie chill in the air, which I guess we're feeling at nighttime. But it's the whole day, and now it's just like I'm not feeling like the cold in that point. But also, like, um, Halloween has become more, like, you know, pushed to the side because Christmas, like, at my job, we have the decorations up for Christmas already. People are coming, like, oh, you got your Christmas stuff up? Like, do you have to comment on it? <laughs> you know, you see, what's, I, I'm, you know, you're my already partner, sick of the Christmas stuff, yeah, and I'm then on, they have to point it they out. Literally like, Thanks, put, asshole. They literally, because it's scary. It's a scary time that's coming up for me. People talk about Halloween is scary, but fucking Christmas in retail is the scariest time of year for me. It's terrifying. Yes. <laughs> I, one of the only, uh, one of maybe three panic attacks in my entire life was when we were working together <laughs> yeah. at, uh, during Christmas. And one of those reasons is because I worked with you. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, because you didn't <laughs> you do a goddamn the, you thing. You looked at the schedule like, oh, shit, drill's working. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> I, I would see you hanging out in the back of the store, just peering around the, the DVD cases. <laughs> like, I'm here. Am I working? I don't know. I'm here. I'm not queer. Get used to it. Um, um, the other the other problem I have is um, the lack of movies. You're gonna lack say. of movies. Uh, TV. I'm a, uh, TV. Uh, the, this uh, time of year is usually just brimming with Halloween stuff. Yeah. Uh, you have horror movies on every channel. Uh, last year, the best best channels were Stars and El Rey, and because they had just tons of horror movies. Whoa! They took um, out sci-fi or sci-fi and sci-fi <laughs> as well. So Sci-Fi does their 31 days of Halloween. Yeah. They've been putting on, I don't know, three, four horror movies a night. And Mm. then the rest is just old reruns of Battlestar Galactica (laughs) and fucking whatever bullshit. Same thing with AMC. AMC has Monster Fest or Fear Fest or whatever the fuck it's called these days. Um, They've decided that, you know what? We'll just do what marathons of Walking Dead instead. Yeah, speaking of that, tonight's tonight, you guys. New Walking Dead season seventeen, oh. I think. Listen, <laughs> I, I know, know I know you guys that. can't see this, but I'm just doing a jerk off hand motion <laughs> harder than I've ever done before in my entire life. <laughs> this season will be the one. What's Negan gonna do? What's Negan gonna do? Um, I don't know. It's just I'm not watching this season, but 
Yeah, it's there's just me. Th- there's just nothing there's nothing on TV. It's it's really really d- depressing me to the point where I actually I walked into a Best Buy and I bought DVDs this year. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get us to pay for these movies that they were showing for free back in the past. And 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 you know what? Things have changed cuz I stopped buying DVD. I, you know, I'll buy a DVD periodically from mm. Amazon usually. I haven't walked into a Best Buy to, to buy a DVD in forever. That's because yeah. they barely fucking sell them yeah, yeah. anymore. Yeah. So speaking of movies, that leads me to my thing. I'm trying to still keep with the horror tradition. So when Halloween comes around, <clears throat> I watch like, you know, the movies I have my Netflix queue on hold. I start pulling them out and watching them. I still got to get the Hellraiser. I really want to start watching that movie because it's been on the queue for years. But tonight, last night, you got to get Hellraiser, man. I just I just watched the second one with my fiance, and she she was terrified. Yeah, she she grew up not knowing Hellraiser. She yeah. thought it was like this dumb slasher movie, and I was like, no, you got to watch. Yeah. you'll start with the first two. We and I, stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I played the first one for her, and then I came home from work one night, and she was just watching the third and fourth one by herself. And I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. You jumped and slid over to the TV and pulled the clip no, out. The, the third and fourth one. The fourth one is Hellraiser in space. So oh, God. that's. It's actually surprisingly good because they also um, tell you the origin of the the puzzle box and, about this weird uh, <laughs> and how Freddy got there too. <laughs> um, Marquis de Sade uh, type guy that like invented the box to go you know into another dimension to you know meet the S and M demons. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's, it's pretty it's it's pretty great. But yeah, the first two are musts. Three and four are optional. Um, if you want to see a guy get killed with CDs um, <laughs> being thrown like Frisbees, <laughs> Which, uh, then you definitely need <laughs> like to watch the third one. Three Ninjas, I think. I remember they yeah. had that in Three Ninjas, too. Um, that reminds me now. We are talking about slashers in a way. So I decided last night to watch The Cult of Chucky, being that I'm a big Child's Play fan. Oh, don't, no spoilers. It's there are sitting no spoilers. In my, sitting in my Nick Netflix queue. I'm watching it this week. I got a couple days off. This is all I'm going to say to you guys right now. Um like I was really cool that they brought him back with the uh, Curse of Chucky a few years ago. I was really happy with that movie, except for one part, which I won't spoil if you haven't seen it yet. But they they are really trying their hardest to like you know link back to the originals. And I think with this new one, uh, there's kind of a combination between like a psychological horror movie and a slasher movie. And what they're trying to do is bring back like older characters and they're hoping like to get the fans that like you no know, grew up on the old ones like oh my god i remember that person that's so cool they brought that such and such back into the film but what they don't want you to remember is every minute detail about the previous movies and that's actually what's the problem right now uh they actually um don't want you to remember certain people that have passed away that are still alive again uh, in this movie, so that's kind of like uh, my biggest issue with the the cult of Chucky, and basically how I'm going to wrap this up. If I'm, you guys ever want me to do like a uh, a ranking of the best to worst, um, right now I do want to, you to do a ranking. Right now, I really think I'll actually get it together and do it, but I think like because I'm a diehard. Uh Die um, hard, die hard, man. <laughs> I am as yeah. well. Uh, the, uh, the, um, the the first one. Fuck. What's the name of it? <laughs> Not seed of Chucky. Oh, uh, the first one. Bride Ch- of Chucky. Chucky. Oh, bride of Chucky. Okay. That, I'm a die hard bride of Chucky guy. Okay, so I really hate seed of Chucky, but this new one is pretty damn close to being the worst one I've seen. But um, God damn, seed of Chucky was bad too. I really want to watch seed of Chucky again to really be fair to say which one is worse out of those two. But those, but the the latest one for me is ranked really low, and I hope you want to you watch it from what I said because they. They're just like, oh, you see a person. I remember them, but the, you, but diehard people like me will be like, wait a minute, how does this person in this movie, if previous movie they this minute thing happened to them and they not? Why is are it they a there? continuation of the previous movies? Hell, fucking yeah! They're trying to do that. They're trying to continuate things, and they're trying to like. Or is it um, kind of like the Return of the Living Dead series where the actors are? In the second one, but they're playing different characters. That's what you thought at first when you saw our character, because they're like, "Well, this person, yeah, they're, yeah, they're dead." But then they say, "No, this is him." Like, then you're like, "Him or her?" I'm not going to spoil it, but you're like, "Wait a minute, they passed away in this movie. How are they here?" We're not. Maybe they'll explain it by the end of the movie since it's a psychological film, but they don't. And then it's just like, "Oh my god, so sloppy, sloppy film." And there's another thing about the whole like seance that he does when he wants to take over his souls, but I won't get into that. And they fucked that up too. 
worst one I've God almost the worst damn. one I've seen too. So uh, well, check my it out. Ha- Halloween is definitely ruined because I was going to watch this this week. Yeah, and watch now, it. I want to talk about it next time we we get together. If it's if I don't like it, then you know what? Halloween's canceled. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to start knocking over people's decorations <laughs> and set houses on fire that are decorated. I'm just going to be stealing kids' candy. Halloween is canceled. If 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 this movie. Is no good. I can't yeah. take it anymore. All right, so let me check my notes here. Speaking of Halloween, we were going to actually talk about. You said why you love Halloween so much. Now, this this is what I want to ask you, Drew. If you've noticed this, when we were do your actually first question, do your parents like Halloween at all? Do they celebrate it at to all? a certain extent? I think it was more for the kids for them. Right, that's my point. Do you recall when we were younger? That Halloween was for kids, and now it's for. I feel adults? like I know where you're going with this. Okay, yeah, that's my question. Do you feel it's more for adults now than kids? We took it away from them? Uh, I don't know. I don't have kids. Because <laughs> You can answer this better than I can. Okay. Mm. Uh, I do know that um, there's a lot of people uh, my age and younger uh, that like to celebrate, quote-unquote, Halloween um, by just um, dressing in uh, half-assed costumes and getting wasted. Yeah. It's more about that now, just getting drunk and getting in... And I wrote right here. Now it's turned into like I think what happened was somewhere around the '90s, late '90s, it became like you know, sexy fill in the blank costume. That's what it's become now. So did you, did you see sexy Rick Grimes? It's basically sexy. They have sexy Rick Grimes now. Went from, uh, t- 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 it. This is a callback to uh, Walking Dead. Did. So it's basically started out with sexy nurse. Now it's like sexy janitor, sexy hypodermic needle. Like anything is sexy now. And it's just sexy, like I want to see sexy janitor. Sexy janitor, yeah, that would be hot. Sexy plumber, stuff like that. But it's plumbers just, aren't sexy already. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, who's dropping it like it's hot? Yeah, especially when you see that uh, that crack right yeah. there. It's just I I actually think it's it's fucked up for kids, but at the same time, children nowadays they don't seem like they want to like embrace Halloween as much as we do now. Like, for example. When it comes to trick or treating with like stuff like that, you notice how when I take my kids out, they get uh, not the the babies, but my oldest. She gets like you know I'm t- I'm done. I don't want to go out anymore. And it's like maybe eight thirty when I used to take her out. So I used to like when she starts when I when she goes out with her friends, I take a permanent marker and I mark on her bag like exactly where the candy level needs to be before she's allowed back in the house. <laughs> well, I think you have a. I, I think I have a skewed view of it. But yeah. I, how old is your daughter? The sixteen, fifteen, yeah, sixteen now. But I think I think you um, are looking at her through rose colored glasses. She doesn't want to be out with her dad. <laughs> not with and, me i'm saying with her friends she goes well, alone yeah um well, not i alone think i friends. think you don't know what she's doing with her friends and it ain't trick or treating <laughs> it's throwing eggs and toilet papering houses and well if that's still happening i'm happy then i'm really content yeah. if it's still the same tradition as when we were young you're like oh bring bring back all this candy you <laughs> you do good now and she's like thanks dad and she's just like you know making a homemade flamethrower <laughs> she never makes it to the level i, I put the level lower yeah, every year she has better things to do than get candy <laughs> yeah she's too old for that shit but we weren't when we were 12 years old we like uh, yeah, wanted to get well, as much as possible. i agonized over that uh for years i i i was like oh well i'm too old now that i'm a teenager like mm. i can't go trick-or-treating and then uh what i ended up doing was uh going back to that when i was older i was like 17 18 19 i actually the last time i trick or treat i think i was 19 and the only reason i stopped was i was smoking while i was trick-or-treating yeah and Hardcore, um, man. they didn't the people that i was trick-or-treating from didn't uh like that i also yeah. had a full beard at the time <laughs> so Say it's your costume dude. I'm, it's not my real beard i just was, really glued this shit on <laughs> I, I think they didn't appreciate somebody that age trick-or-treating yeah and that's when it, it needed to stop it's just weird that it's changed now that we've taken it from kids and they don't even give a fuck about it like um what would you say is like your worst halloween and then we'll go to our best halloween worst halloween um i rented halloween h2o uh and sat at home doing homework that i had put off when i was in high school okay that was my worst halloween all right so my worst i was Hall- doing i was doing homework oh, while i was watching one of the worst halloween movies. Yeah. my worst halloween was uh when i was 12 when uh i went with my mother to church because they were having anti-halloween thing and uh i vowed after that i'm going to make some fucking friends <laughs> and go go trick-or-treating the complete opposite direction of anti-halloween yeah and literally the next year when i was in eighth grade uh we went i i I rode bus home with my friend i was dressed like uh 
Lauren Hardy. I had a Lauren Hardy mask, but I had a a, a big like both of them. Yeah, like, it was Laurel, both of them. Laurel and Hardy conjoined twins. It was yeah, and I had like a fucking uh, hatchet with my me. So and I put blood on it, so it didn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> like, like, why are they killers, and why do they have black hands? And, <laughs> and that like, was when you get to an age where you're like, you know what? I'm going to buy a new mask for fifteen dollars at the drugstore. Yeah, and some type of cl- plastic weapon. Yeah, and to just go out. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we uh, we went. We started at like maybe like after school, so probably like I would say like around three o'clock. We were out. Still sunny, trick or treating, going places. You know, we went to we and I came. We went. I came upon the first time in my life seeing the 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 mistake that some some adults make. The the dreaded like you know basket of candy out front oh, with the bit with the it. sign take one piece. And that was the first time I've ever seen that in my life. And we saw that shit. And we just rack that shit and See, took it, and it's and like, and then I blame them. I blame the parents. It's not, it's not our fault for being greedy children. You should love the joy of when that doorbell rings and getting up and opening the door and seeing all these cool costumes and actually handing the candy out. If you're gonna be fucking lazy and put a basket out. You deserve to get all your definitely. fucking candy taken. I was actually kind of bummed when I moved into an apartment and none of the kids in the apartment building tr- came and trick or treated. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Um, that's gonna lead to another thing I want to say that my wife said I can't do, but. Um, anyway, back to that. We took all the candy. We ran away, and someone, a lady came out, right? And she's yeah. like, she's like, how many pieces did you take? We're like, one. She's like, yeah, right. So that was our first moment and of mischief. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why communism as a com- <laughs> concept doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. When you say, take what you need, <laughs> everybody will take all of it. Yeah. And it, we never saw that before. I was like, what the fuck? And we just took that shit. Yeah. And then we went to another place. Like, oh, there's no, there's no, um, let, there's pumpkins here. Let's take them and go to the street and smash them. So we went in there <laughs> smashing pumpkins like this, like the band. And then someone came out and they're like, hey, and we just ran away. It was like mischief and trick or treating at the same time. It was great. Now, here's the point that is different from now back then to now. We fucking kept going till like 10 o'clock. Just house house. What a badass. I know. We were just ringing bells. They wouldn't answer. We go to the next house, ringing bells. People come out. Dude, it's kind of late. They give the candy out all like you know half ass stuff like that. They didn't want to do it, but they do. Now, I think that was why now there's a curfew now because it's like this is when it exactly stops. When I take my kids out, they say uh, whatever time nine o'clock is done. But back when oh, I was a kid, we could, just, we could just keep going, keep going. Yeah. Until, <laughs> um, so it was it was that was like um, as a kid my favorite Halloween. Obviously, when I got older, I went to bars, started drinking and right. getting laid, so like that. Those are better ones, but. I'm trying to be more like, you know, PC and uh, wholesome for you guys out there. That was my favorite Halloween. And that gets to like my point with the whole like uh, like when I with the whole basket that the person left out, I'm like, I can't wait to be like a dad and like start handing that out. Uh, Same similar to what my father used to do. Told my wife this a couple weeks ago, like because she's like, let's not buy it. She's like, let's not buy any candy this year because we're always out. I'm like, yeah, you're right. But at some point. You know, I'm going to have to be home to, like, give the candy out. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you know, like, when they're, like, eight or nine, the other two boys, you know, I probably, you can take them out and I'll stay home. She's like, she's like no, you're going until they don't, they don't want us to go anymore. <laughs> it's like, really? Aww. Not that I don't like to do it, but it's you just You gotta like, wait until they're teenagers and that they're out I thought that houses. was a tradition of, like, the mother does that. Like, because when I took my daughter out when she was younger, she I would see other mothers with their girlfriend and then the kids i didn't see the dads around yeah and then they were they were uh running for the nearest payphone trying to call 911 being like hey there's a there's a guy he's clearly a <laughs> child predator he's got a girl with him <laughs> Real clearly yes no uh, but i just learned from the i learned the hard way that i'm not going to be able to do that you know so i kind of bumped me out a little bit but um you'll be able to do it when you get older when, the, would, I, I, when, when your older when your daughter takes takes your sons out to egg houses and shit, then you'll, <laughs> then you'll be able to stay home. Make daddy proud. <laughs> you'll be you'll be finally watching Hellraiser two Do you with your some, wife. Look, you need some, candy. You need some double quilted before you go out. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it sticks better when you throw it double quilted. And here's some shaving cream for you. Uh, I remember that too. We went on. Um, we went to Seven Eleven when I was in high school to buy some eggs, and they were like, you know. Well, sorry, we went to stop. We went to the grocery store to buy some eggs on the thirtieth. <laughs> we get in line, and as soon as we get to the front, 
some lady comes up to us and she's like, you know, you can't buy these because you're under 18. We're like, but we're making omelets. I remember getting <laughs> carded for eggs yeah. in the past. <laughs> and then I finally just started t- stealing them from my parents. Yeah, or just buying them earlier. Um, so what was your favorite Halloween, Drew, before we get into Oh, it? God, there's so many. Um, there was one where I actually, uh, it was one of the first ones I went out by myself without my parents. It was just me and a couple of friends. And... Uh, we decided we were going to get the most candy ever. And this is where you graduate from the, the little candy pail or whatever yeah. to, like, the pillowcase. And we right. had, like, full pillowcases by the end of the night. We went, in, went out, like, 3 o'clock. It was on, like, a Saturday, so we didn't have to worry about school. <laughs> we went out at, like, you know, 2, 3 o'clock. We, we weren't in until, you know, I don't know, 10, 11, something like that. We had so much candy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just the freedom of... Uh, being by yourself was was another thing. What was that? Um, what grade was that? You said high school? Uh, yeah, I think it was like tenth grade. Some, okay, ninth, tenth grade. Yeah, when you're still allowed to trick or treat is in high school up till like your senior year. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then last year wasn't bad. Uh, I got really drunk off of a uh, homemade beer at mm. a friend's house and uh, got buck wild around a pool table, and uh, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, actually, come to think of it, the other one I was thinking of was also around a pool table. <laughs> Everything Drink, fun drinking, happens around pool tables. Drinking, uh, I think I was 18, 19 at the time, uh, and we actually we found an old um, uh, like l- underwear shirt, like thermal underwear shirt. Yeah. We cut the sleeves off and put eye holes in them, and we put them on as masks. Yeah. Um, because we were at just like a Halloween party. It was one of those things where like nobody was dressed up, or it was just half ass costumes. And so we were like, we'll just put a put these homemade masks on and go get candy because there's no candy at this fucking party because it's a (laughs) Halloween party that has nothing to do with Halloween. And so we went down the street, got some candy, came back, kept drinking. Uh, It was, that was another good one. I'm kind of missing. I I feel like I've had more good Halloween than bad Halloween. Me too. I'm kind of missing. I really didn't get to do something this year. Last year I dressed up as Handyman from uh, In Living Color and went to like one of those pub crawl things. It was fun, but um, once it comes to the, the weekend again, I'll probably do it again. But I yeah, feel that's like, the that's the big problem. Is I feel like I'm weekend. becoming my dad in a way because it's like in one way it's just like I'm cool with not doing something this year, but another way it's just like no, I plan in the future like I'm going to do something fun. But Drew enlightened me last podcast we did that you know I'm gonna I'm a parent. You immediately become less cool, and no matter how hard you try. So I just want it to naturally happen. So I think, yeah, I think I should clarify that a little bit. Um, if you're a cool parent, you don't have to say it. Yeah, it, it just happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're a relatively cool parent. Thank you. You're. Aww. You I should have an awe button. Going out <laughs> doing pub crawls and whatnot. So I mean, that's fine. What makes you a cool parent, though, is not going out and having you know extracurricular fun, as it were. Yeah. Is uh, what makes you a cool parent is you don't constantly have to talk about how you're a cool parent and try to prove to people how you're a cool parent. Yeah, I'm not I'm not fucking tanning and stuff and like you know waving to my daughter and trying drinking to drinking like, wine know, all the time, yeah, <laughs> big glasses of wine and trying to like you know dab and whenever having, I see my my girls kids. night and talking about how uh, <laughs> milfs get the money or whatever. Yeah, I'm, or I, I guess Andy. dilfs. I remember that uh, we were just talking last week. We reviewed the. The Fergie album, that's what we're getting at. How and can I, how I can love I when they fucking spell out the words and shit. I'm I N D E P E N D. Oh my God, stop. Uh, anyway, so listen to that podcast if you never let we reviewed the perfect. Yeah, album. I think uh, speaking of cool, the cult of cool moms, uh, there's a new cool mom movie coming out. Did you see that? The Christmas, uh, Christmas with the one? bad moms? Bad moms, yeah. Did like, you see the first one? I kind of just want to cringe watch it. There was a point... We should I, live podcast So it. I watched up to the... You did see it? No, I didn't. Oh, I, I watched up to the part when she decided to be cool... To, 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 to turn... And that's when I stopped watching it. So I got to... I got to cool. Yeah. Like it's kind of like the end of Grease where she shows up in a leather jacket. Well, you know how the movie... Only now it's like with a fake tan and like a glass of wine. You know how movies are when a person's getting beaten down. They're like, I'm not taking this anymore. And that's when I stopped watching it. So I got maybe half hour into the film. Um. Uh. So let's actually get into some of these reviews now. And by the way, I'm liking the pale ale, uh, the pumpkin ale. And it is I'm, nothing. It is not a pale ale. You yeah, you pumpkin. shut your mouth. It is a brown ale. Yeah, it's brown. It, so it's brown. It's drink it down. So brown that it is in danger of being shot by a cop. <laughs> Laugh, you guys. Laugh. I Come am, on. It's not I'm bad. concerned for this beer right now. Yeah. <laughs> make sure make sure you wear your seatbelt beer. 
I just want to. I just want to say that I love the police. Please don't uh, don't <laughs> surveil my house or kill me. Thank you. You're like the anti uh, NWA track. You got to put that out. I love the <laughs> love the police. Love, 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 love the police. Uh, I'm trying not to get killed. That's it. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's get to some reviews right now. We're gonna start right off with the guys one you've been all waiting for, you guys, uh, and we'll go back to the Halloween stuff in a minute after this. Starting off with Marilyn Manson's album Heaven Upside Down. And he's the shock rock artist, and this is his 10th studio album with the band and the group debut album, uh, Portrait of an American Family, was released in 1994, but with the EP Smells Like Children and the sophomore album Antichrist Superstar in 1996, Marinson began seeing some mainstream success and media coverage. Mostly due to his uh, gothic makeup, costumes, and uh, shocking on-stage behavior. Um, also, which helped was uh, the uh, politicians and news credit circuits began blaming Manson for teenage suicides and also the violence, including the Columbine massacre. And this only helped uh, get the band more attention. Now, Manson signed to the label Nothing Records back in 1993 which not only is a subdivision of Interscope, but also was founded by Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. However, after the seventh album, the high end of low, he left Interscope due to creative differences. Also, for me, this was when I started listening to his like full-length albums again. I kind of stepped off, stopped after 1988's um, Mechanical uh, Animals. Nobody blames you. Uh, so I've heard his last four records in their entirety, and similar to the critics, my opinion of them are just as mixed. Like, there are decent tracks here and there, but perhaps the industrial metal uh, sound is starting to grow stale for me. So, Drew, before we get into this, uh, what is your listening to all his albums, or were you still keeping up with him? I mean, I was I was a freshman in high school when Columbine happened, so you kind of get an idea of yeah, what yeah. Marilyn Manson meant to me. I was never a huge fan, <laughs> but he was almost like an icon, where it was just like... It was almost like he understood you when your parents didn't and when your school teachers didn't. And, you know, uh, okay. I, I kind of, when I, uh, you know, got a little older, uh, it, I kind of fell off because, you know, you don't need that kind of influence in your life anymore. You're not a, a angsty teen. So you stopped at the same time as me. You didn't go yeah. to like Hollywood and all that. Um, stuff. Yeah, I, I fell off. I think before Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. Or Hol- Hollywood. Holy. <laughs> Sorry, you got to have the puns when it comes to him. Uh, and, and boy, does this album have some fucking puns! I'll yeah. tell you. That. <laughs> the last album, uh, The Pale Emperor, came out like two only two years ago. I gave that album a positive review, possibly because it's got a combination of goth metal and blues rock or maybe because it was my first review and i wasn't as cynical as i am now <laughs> one or the other um i think in you know i haven't heard your review i think it's probably just because it's a good album yeah i came back on with that album uh my my soon-to-be parents-in-law bought uh for christmas me and my fiance a uh, uh tickets to see him and I was like, oh, well, I'll check out his new album in addition to re-listening to like Mechanical Animals and Antichrist Superstar and whatnot. And I was pleasantly surprised because it was something different. It was not the kind of watered down, I'm trying to stay relevant, but I'm, I don't really believe in any of this shit anymore yeah. kind of Hollywood. So I'm not crazy. Like, po- yeah. Post-Hollywood even. Like I had heard a few songs off of those albums. It was completely unimpressed. But Pale Emperor, I felt like it was very like kind of sleazy, bluesy rock, and it was really good. It's I agree, uh, man. Not quite as heavy as like the stuff that like Danzig does, but kind of almost in the same vein. Yeah, so that's cool. Like I, I'm not crazy then. Um, I It's no surprise, you guys, that um, Manson is the only original member left in the group. It's kind of hard to leave a band when you're, it's named after you. But uh, long-running bassist Twiggy still remains as the band's touring member. And this latest album has uh, Tyler Bates handling ma- majority of the instrumentation, mixing, and uh, production. And Gil Sharon on drums. Manson is still using the same vocal techniques, which involves soft-spoken, like, you know, sinister lyrics that are occasionally screamed with lots of distortion, which can be heard in the tracks that starts the album off, like uh, Revelation number 12 and We Know Where You Fucking Live. Uh, these songs are having enjoyable moments during all the aggressive program guitar riffs, 
like the dance rock uh, keyboards on the track uh, Tattooed in Reverse. But it's everything you've heard before um, when I start off, I think. It's interesting that you bring up dance rock because I... It felt like there was so much EDM bullshit on this album. Yeah. Uh, but when it started off, I felt like it was like, um, this is what you always do. I was kind of not, not feeling it. But then everything turns around for me on um, by track four at a song called Satan. Um, I like that song. It's got the quiet uh, hip hop uh, mixed beat, uh, creepy background piano keys before the bla- blaring guitars come in. And the chorus when he's like, you know. You say God, I say Satan, Satan. Um, Satan. it was an all right song. The lyrics are cringy as fuck. Okay, it's <laughs> I agree it's with you, say yeah. the number ten. Yeah. yeah, Satan. Right. Say the pun. Like, all right. So he's always been really into puns. They've just been way more clever than on this album. Mm. And then I feel like the last album. That one of the reasons I liked it so much was it was just stripped down and honest he wasn't trying to be clever and on this album he was really trying to be clever and it was just awful okay the lyrics are fucking terrible on this album i couldn't stand it and and the thing is he's not he's he's not how he was in his 20s you know this isn't 20 years ago where he was trying to be edgy and he was pushing buttons and he was even like getting banned from certain venues and getting even getting banned from certain states at times and like Mm -hmm. you know being picketed and like all this shit and it was so effortless when he was doing it in the 90s now it seems like he's putting extra effort into trying to be edgy and it's not edgy at all it's just really corny See, I feel the opposite. I don't feel like he's. I feel like he's not trying to make make uh, be like you know the the spokesperson of like you know the just the shock rock. Now I feel like he's just doing what he wants to doing what he does and not he doesn't he doesn't have something that he's has to prove or say. It's just feel like he just making music still. I, I disagree. I think Pale Emperor. That's what he was doing in this album. He oh, was, you think he? But he's back try- then he didn't. But now he is. Okay. Yeah, I think this album because he does he. He does talk about how he's like, you know, a Satanist and like, you know, people are, you know, not too fond of him in certain circles, we'll say, on the last album, on Mm -hmm. Pale Emperor. Um, But it it felt honest. It felt real. And it wasn't, it didn't feel like an act, whereas now it just kind of feels like an act. Okay. So let's go more into like the music then. then. Obviously, you read the lyrics, but into the lyrics more than I did. So that's probably what the problem is. Um, But... There's a lot of religious themes in this album, and continuing on that religious theme, let's go to the track called uh, "Jesus Crisis." It's got like a groovy, like little, it's a little groovy, little ditty where Manson uh, proclaims he writes songs for people to fight and fuck to. I hate that fucking the lyrics <laughs> on this song. They're just so hard, and that's the other. That's thing. what you're, I see. What you're saying, yeah. He's, I, just, I, I, tr- he's just trying too hard. It's like just be you, and he he isn't like this. He he tr- does try to be like the satanic guy still, but he's also trying to be like a tough guy. And it's yeah. like you're middle aged and fat. Like you're not <laughs> a tough guy. Nobody thinks you're gonna fight them or fuck them. <laughs> but maybe it's ironic. Ironic, maybe he's not. He's people look at. He's look, just like, look at this. He's like, look. People, people, I'm not fucking anybody up or fucking anybody. <laughs> he's like, people look to his music for those two reasons. He's like, you know, yeah, I write song for that, blah, that, but that's not true. But the music's not bad, right? The, the music, music, music was okay. Yeah, the, the heavy uh, the tribal beat for that song with the disjointed bass riffs. I love that, and of course, with like the middle of all that, you gotta. He has to break down with the traditional. Industrial metal yell where he's like screaming Jesus crisis and fuck fight fuck back and forth um, towards the end. He's got to do that. And it's I'm I agree with you that it's kind of like cliche, but um, very cliche. I'm not saying I hate industrial metal or that Marilyn Manson is too is is. Well, I am saying he's too cliche at it, but I'm not saying I hate industrial metal. I'm just saying he could do better, which I think he does. And the song Blood Honey is where he fucking shines in that shit. I, yeah, I thought that was one of the better songs in the yeah. album. Mid, it's one old school feel with the mid-tempo uh, grungy riffs, soft piano keys, synthesized, uh, intertwined. Um, highlight of the record, easily. Uh, this album has a couple of uh, glam rock moments that kind of reminds me a little bit of David Bowie. Uh, you get that like kind of a like Ziggy Stardust moment. Uh you get the song, the, the title track, where it's like the guitar riffs on that song. Really remind me of Z- uh, David Bowie. And early in the album, to get to the song called uh, Kill For Me, has like a 
soothing bass line over a goth synth keys and a disco beat. Manson doesn't even yell once on that song. He has a mellow yet evil voice, helps uh, drive the new wave-esque tune. Uh, that's what I like about this album, when it gets more, like, funky, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the funk! What do you think about that shit, man? Um, I think you're right. I think that um, when you get away from the, you know, like I said, EDM bullshit, then it, it becomes... Because that's what it sounds like. Well, that's what I'm confused. I like... I'm, I'm not going to call it that, but I like when it's dancier, but you don't like it. Like, well, I like when it's dancier, but, like, not... Some of the it, it, some of the songs sounded more um, what's the word I guess real mm-hmm. like I liked I, I feel like I shouldn't have listened to Pale Emperor before <laughs> listening to this um, because like you know some 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 of the the more funky songs were closer to I mean funky as you'd call it I wouldn't say any of them yeah. were like funky we're closer to kind of what he did on the last record um, and some of the songs were like kind of kind of like the same sort of rock you know mm-hmm. that he's been experimenting with but like with you know sound effects and synthesizers and stuff that he would have been heavier on 20 years ago yeah um and i think just just get all that shit out of there you don't need it <laughs> yeah okay so uh i feel like he's he's got like a, he's, it's almost like an identity crisis he doesn't know if he wants to do like strip down sleazy garage rock or if he wants to keep going on this like you know 90s industrial pop metal type thing (laughs) yeah it's it's just kind of like it's converging and it's not it's it's two great tastes that do not taste great together yeah i hear you um are there any songs that you did enjoy besides that and the ones i mentioned or um, so there's only 10 Blood tracks, Money which I, I loved about that. It's, it's a really short album. That was another thing. I banged it out on a single lunch break at work. <laughs> it was a little bit too short. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, some of the industrial metal songs were all right. Um, what did you think of the uh, the lengthier song? That I think it's called uh, Sat- Saturnalia. Uh, that's like um, a, a... It was all right. Post-punk song? Yeah. It, it, almost, it almost felt like it didn't fit on this album. Hmm. Uh, I thought I, I thought uh, Revelation number twelve was all right. I thought uh, we know where you fucking live was all right. Um, say ten and Jesus Christ, as I couldn't get past the lyrics, it was just too fucking much. <laughs> um, and then Heaven Upside Down kind of just reminded me of um, there was a song on his his last album. Um, I think it might have been the Mephistopheles of Los Angeles. Okay. So he was going that direction. Or no, the, uh, the ne- uh, Devil Beneath My Feet it reminded okay. me a little bit of that. And, you know, that's my problem with this whole album. Like, I could just be listening to his other albums. Mm. But this album, doesn't, like we both agree, doesn't sound exactly like that. There's no blues on it. It's more like. Yeah. It's more like, uh, which I'm going to say with my rating is. Like people are saying, this album's like a combination of um, the industrial metal of Antichrist Superstar with like the ele- electronic dance rock of Mechanical Animals, and I think they're right. Like that's what he's trying to like branch those two together. And the album ex- uh, explores different like uh, musical genres, and this one is more in Manson's comfort zone, unlike the last one. That was more like an experimental re- record for him. Uh, it started off like a little bland, but soon things picked up for the better. The dark mood of the lyrics, uh, the melodies mixed with like the occasional headbanger uh, inducing guitars and groovy funk of the bass lines and the keyboards make up for the, a perfect soundtrack for a teenage suicide, uh, satanic uh, worshipping, <laughs> or whatever you do when you listen to music. <laughs> Um, Me personally, it's teenage suicide. Yeah. So I or say, or making it look like a suicide. <laughs> yeah. I think like he's he's on the right track with the what he's doing. Like you know, go back to the old shit or explore different grounds. Like if you did the whole like cliche like you know industrial metal he was doing on like you know earlier like you know um, born sin, uh, villain stuff like shit that like that that's not working. This is the new. The, um, I would say we call it the Manson 3.0, whatever you want to call it. So I think he's he's on the right track. You should buy this album. It's it's it's, it's good. Uh, Drew, what do you think? <laughs> As you look at me with those hateful eyes. Um, personally, uh, every every single song sounds like a shittier version of something that could be found on either of his vastly superior albums, Antichrist Superstar or The Pale Emperor. Mm. Um, 
it's starting to become painfully obvious that what made Marilyn Manson wasn't completely, uh, what made him special rather, uh, wasn't just himself, but also his backing band and co uh, collaborators. Um, on this album, he appears to be in a state of crisis. Uh, he doesn't know Pun. Jesus crisis. <laughs> a Jesus crisis, one might say. Uh, he doesn't seem to know uh, if he wants to play dirty, sleazy hard rock or stay the course with uh, his '90s pop industrial that made him a star. Um, he doesn't know if he should write lyrics that mean something to him personally or continue on the path of quote unquote edgy goth satanist that may have uh, worked for twenty something Manson but looks like a foolish caricature on forty something Manson. <laughs> uh, what's unfortunate is that his uh, co-writers uh, slash backing band have a very inconsistent track record of pulling it out of him. Uh, and 2015's uh, Pale Emperor seems to have been a fluke. I say skip it. Wow! Wow! You're going go that listen to, low. Go listen to Pale Emperor or. Or Antichrist Superstar, and you're going to get a better better listen. All right. Well, I'm sorry, you guys, that we're so uh, polarizing on this review, but if you actually heard this album, let, let us know anything in the comment section what you thought of the new Marilyn Manson album, or send us an email if you have more to say, if you liked it or hated it, and also tell us what your rating would be as well. Uh, man, Drew. <laughs> I think you didn't that, expect that shit. Yeah, I wasn't expect. I I thought we were. I think honestly, for me, I you must have been listening to him lyrically more than I have been. I just like his his this way his song sounds. You got swept <laughs> away in the funk. Yeah, I love the <laughs> funk. So that's all I love. You know, <laughs> once you put the keyboards and the bass lines in there, I, you sold me right there. I don't care if you're talking about sacrificing like children or babies or whatever or animals. I'm down. You know, when uh, the second there's a white power funk band, Jarrell's done. He's <laughs> going all right. <laughs> He's gonna take over this world. Yeah, like, wait a minute, that's punk. what they were talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, all right, guys, how are you doing out there? We, um, yeah, thanks. We have uh, been doing um pretty well on time, and um, I appreciate the uh, the horror aspect of this show, which we should have some more sound effects for you guys. Oh, spooky! Whoa, things are gonna get a lot more spookier. Even though it is October, we're gonna go back to August. August Burns Red, to be exact, with their album Phantom Anthem. They're a metalcore band from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and this is their seventh album. Actually, their eighth, if you count the Christmas album they released in 2012. Guitarist uh, John Brubaker and Brent Rambler, as well as drummer Matt Grinner, have been with the band since the inception in 2003, but they have gone through three singers, including Jake Lures who has been with a member since their second album, Messenger. In the beginning of August Burns Red, toured with uh, groups like As I Lay Dying and All That Remains, as well as a spot on the Warp Tour in 2008. In 2013, the album, uh, which is called uh, Rescue and Restore, was their highest charting release, debuting at number 9 on the Billboard 200, and saw the band adding progressive rock and thrash metal to their sound. Uh, the group's last album, Found in a Faraway Place, was released on 15 on Phyllis Records, similar to this latest one. Actually, we reviewed that album uh, two years ago, and I gave it a glowing review. Again. Glowing. Uh, uh, this is about, I would say, three months into this podcast starting. So, yeah. Um, I was not giving... The, I was the giving, cynical asshole yeah, yet. Exactly. So, um, though... August Burns Red doesn't enjoy being uh, pigeonholed in the metalcore genre. They have embraced the label, but also they add more mel melody to their sound. Plus, singer uh, the singer does mix some doesn't he doesn't actually mix clean vocals with screams in an effort to sound more unique. Um, and that's what my problem I think is liking the album two years ago and now. I've heard so much fucking generic metalcore in these past two years that I can't like I give I just hand out those skip this is left where, and right where the hell are you finding generic metalcore these days this isn't 2006 <laughs> well it the bands that have been around since then still put out albums and oh, okay. I'm just still saying like you know that's understandable then. I'm like yeah this new album from like you know uh, I'm not gonna shit on bands right now but I just give bad ratings to them now so it's just like this is the one gleaming hope that August Burn Red can keep the, the fire going and have the same thing happen with this new record, which I'm going to tell you like on Pawn First Listen, it would seem they are pretty generic. 
especially with like the opening track king of sorrow which has like the standard metalcore streams the breakdowns but you will also notice the band changes some time signatures here and there quite often throughout the song and there are some amazing lead guitar layer majority of the time that's the one thing i noticed about this band going back to like the um the christmas album to now the the lead guitar slays he shreds and he's continuing to do this on this record and um i'll give them credit on that that's what makes this album this band and i'm using hardcore quotes stand out and i'm gonna um actually ask drew uh you actually were not too excited about listening to this record i'm not a big august burns red fan to be honest what reason is that (coughs) i i feel like that um they're just kind of boring Mm -hmm. uh i don't i think they're really technically proficient i think that they're they know the how to play um i think their singer is fairly multi-dimensional uh he does what the music calls for but they are quite formulaic in my opinion especially compared to a lot of their um a lot of their uh you know the other bands of yeah yeah, they're uh you know contemporaries yeah um the other the only other band that i can think of that uh comes close to how kind of generic they sound and how like not generic but like formulaic they sound is uh the band unearth the only difference uh with unearth versus august burns red i feel like they know how to write a a riff that'll stick with you whereas august burns red every song kind of sounds the same you know you got the the speedy uh, uh, noodly guitar part then you got the breakdown then you got the you know important you know melodic like praise the lord uh, part and then you got the technical part again and then another breakdown and it's just like and that's the end of the song um, but I feel like with this band on this album especially they really do a job of like a, a great job of blending like the intensity of metalcore which we're saying is generic nowadays with the, the pop sensibility of alternative metal. Uh, I think, you know, again, I'm not a big August Burns Red fan. I've only heard a, a few of their albums, you know, the first few albums. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they have come into their own as just songwriters on yeah. this album. Um, I can actually tell the songs apart. Right. Um, where in the past, it's just been kind of the same thing over, over and over again until the album's done. Um, this one, it has like a flow to it. Mm-hmm. They, I don't know what happened, but they learned how to write a goddamn song <laughs> instead of just writing riffs and then throwing them together and then calling it a song. Yeah, this is actually a band that's been around for so long that they they have no choice but to evolve. And the song I'm talking about is the 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 uh, what's it called? The Frost. I think it's like third track in. It's this when they the, the first moment you hear in an album where they're blending like you know. The yeah, two I really, I really like that one. Uh, by the way, that was a standout. Um. I would say, by the way, listen for like the funky bass lines during like the bridge and the breakdowns. It's rare a bass player can shine in this genre with all the heavy guitars and yelling happening. And from the previous albums I've heard from the group, I've always admired how they go from like heavy thrash metal, to, like clean melodic, like hardcore, uh, hard rock in the same song. Same is done on this album with tracks like a uh, Lifeline and Hero of the Half, uh, Hero of the Half Things. Uh, whatever it's called. I didn't write too well. Hero of the Half Something. What is that song called? The, the second song. Uh, Hero of the Half Truth. Thank you. I have really bad writing. Oh, which, chicken scratch. Which has a it has a mellow bass groove mixed with like the sultry guitar solo before going back to the thrash. I love thrash. Like that's my favorite like metal. If I want to categorize like my metal, so bands out there if you just want to like you know impress me just be a whole thrash man and i'll I'll probably give you like you know a mediocre rating but you'll be on the right track just doing that um (laughs) he'll listen to it all the time but he'll only sort of like it yeah as much as i enjoy thrash metal like i'm saying the songs like uh quake will get like a perfect reaction from like the mosh pits i was starting to get kind of bored with the redundancy halfway through i was pretty bored yeah the songs the album's what 12 it's 11 tracks four, only 11 tracks 11 tra- it felt like so much it mm-hmm. felt like 15 mm. um it, like i said it's not a bad album it starts getting redundant like you said yeah the last three albums uh, were just 
fucking killing me. Like I <laughs> last just, two songs. Uh, yeah, I listened okay. to them just out of obligation. Yeah, because you know I I I was listening to the first few songs. They were actually had like some riffs I liked. The first song, uh, King of Sorrow, had like kind of a really epic breakdown towards the end. Mm-hmm. Um, it by by like track six seven I had seen all their tricks. Right, it yeah. just needed to go away. Yeah. I'm the same way, but luckily by, like we said, track six, the song called, uh, the song called uh, Coordinates, like, learn leans more towards, like, the alt-metal side, which I like when they do, I, if I have to deal with it, with this album, I'm like, at least they're doing that, I, 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 I approve of that. I think they shine best when it's something technical at the beginning of the song, yeah. and then they slow it down towards the end. Yeah. Not breakdown, slow it down, you know, not like a moshy part, but, like, just kind of, you know epic you yeah. know just out there and melodic and soaring now drew saying that's epic and i i'm gonna mention right now the singer when he actually does the first time in this album with the clean vocals sound a little bit like chester from lincoln park but i'm not going to like you know fault them for that and i'm gonna i'm gonna say something completely out of character right now i think this album needed more clean vocals right i agree they were saying like you know well we don't, i don't do that too often but i'm like you should do it more do it more <laughs> dude the music calls for it yeah. i think um but on the other hand, with the clean vocals and like with the technical stuff that Drew's saying, and when it gets to like you know they're going out there, I really, it's really not that special about that when they do it. It doesn't warrant to be over five minutes long. These songs, uh, that's the problem. The songs are too long. Uh, Definitely. Some same can be said for the six minute track um, generations. Big problem. Uh, the last song on this album called Carbon Copy. I want to talk about is over five minutes. Ironic. Long. Yeah. Yeah, five minutes long over, but it does have some crazy chaotic time signatures at the beginning. There's a creepy, like, atmospheric, like, ambient, like, uh, beat towards, like, the end. But the rest of the song, like Drew said, uh, is, lives up to the title <laughs> by being everything you've heard before. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was such a weird song to go out on, uh, especially considering I really loved the last song of the album we're going to be reviewing next. Mm-hmm. And having listened to that one first, I listened right. to this album. I was like, "That's it, right?" It yeah. just sort of ends. It's just like, "Here's another song that sounds like the last couple of songs. We're done. Goodbye." Yeah. When I saw the time of that song. I'm like, "Well, the other songs in the middle were really long. Obviously, you got to end on, a, on an epic high note, and they do not. It just kind of peters out. It's almost yeah. just like they shot their load too soon. <laughs> where it, like the song finishes, and then it just kind of gets soft and like." There's like sound effects or whatever. Like, yeah. Okay. And what? And what? What? What was the point? <laughs> Drew, you want to go first? Your rating. Um, I'm sorry. Every time I talk to you, you're about to check a. Switch. Actually, I didn't write anything down. Uh, that's how I feel about this album. Okay. Um, I I'm just gonna wing it. Uh, to be honest, I think that they've uh, progressed considerably. I think that it's not what I would call a bad album. It's also not going to break the mold. Okay. Um, so the bad but, news is it's not that good, but the good news is it's not that, that bad. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I think it's considerably better than previous albums that I've heard, the, le- the first few albums, uh, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, the songwriting, they've come leaps and bounds. Uh, the riffs kind of sound the same, but I think that they, the way they're fit together makes a lot more sense. I think the guitar leads are a lot better, especially over breakdowns, You know, gener- the generic breakdowns they have a tendency <laughs> of doing. Yeah. They're, they're usually not just like chug-chug breakdowns. It's like the chug-chug breakdown with like you know some sort of something fun and they have interesting a good transition. over yeah. over the top of the, the chug-chug breakdown. Yeah. Um, you know, I think August Burns Red fans will probably love this album. Uh, I think if you're into just metalcore in general, general you probably like it. I'm going to say, uh, you know, give it a spin. Just uh, download it. Okay, he said download it. Um, I had a lot more to say. That's why I had to go first. Um, being that I like the last album a lot, uh, I'm going to say August Burns Red has always been a decent band to me. As much as I pride them, they pride themselves on adding different nuances to their music, it's not really that memorable. In addition to the songs being too long for their style, the melodic blues uh, rock breakdowns they strategically place in the middle of, of certain tracks are also too long and basic. I don't know why you like them so much. Like when you hear it, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air, but then you listen to it each time to do it, it's just like that's it, and then it goes back to what they were doing on metalcore. I think they need to push the envelope more when they musically when they do those parts or cut them down by half the time. 
Plus, their hooks need to be a lot more catchier to even bother going alternative metal. I disagree with you. I think there just needs to be hooks, period. There yeah. weren't a lot of hooks at all. Like I'm, I'm when I listen to the album, I'm hearing there's a br- the, 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 uh, a chorus, and yeah, I'm like, it's like it, I don't you're, really... you're almost there. You just got to get a little catchier. Yeah, like there's not a single lyric stuck out on this album at all. But since this metal core is decent and the band has more potential than they think, they are barely getting this rating from me. Barely, barely a download this. So this okay. It's so just, from the two of us, this is a middling effort by a middling band. Yes. Yeah. It, you're not going to hate it, but you're not going to love it. Yeah. If you really need something to listen to, give it a spin. But otherwise, uh, who cares? But yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. If you heard a new uh, August Burns Red, what would your rating be? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Or if you have more to say about it, send us a lengthy email. We appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it's just... I, I don't know. It's just... It, sucks it is what it is. It's fine, and that's all. They they seem like they could do so much better. They could really change the world with their metalcore. I feel like they need to get uh, the uh, like a producer or something. Yeah, like they need to. They need to, a Rick Rubin in their life. Exactly. Yeah. They need somebody to be like, listen. A lot of what you do is bullshit. Cut it out. Yeah. Or a lot of the and actually. I feel like Rick Rubin would be the perfect person for that because from what I understand, that's kind of what he does where you give him a song and then he says, okay, this part is good, that part is crap, this other part is not that great. Yeah. Go try again. Yeah, I agree, man. So let us know what you think. Uh, So I decided before we get to the last review uh, to try the Oktoberfest. How's that treating you? Let me take another drink. Uh, Actually, I like it. It's good. It's smooth and flavorful. It sticks with you. It's like a cigarette. Smooth. I'm in flavor town. Um, but now I don't know which one I like better out of the two. The pale Ale from uh, Dogfish Head or the Sam Adams? I hate to say it, but Oktoberfest, I think, is better. I agree, yeah. I think it's just because nobody can fuck with Oktoberfest. <laughs> Even the worst Oktoberfest beers I've ever ever tasted were better than, like, you know, a lot of other beers. If I ever get to go to um, Germany for their Oktoberfest, they should have the Sam Adams, like, you know, flowing. Drink Not like drink. actual German Oktoberfest. Yeah, I don't want that. I just want the Sam Adams, man. <laughs> Nothing authentic. Yeah, because I'm an American. Damn it! You You're know? gonna eat McDonald's the whole time there too. <laughs> I'm that guy that goes to different like states and stuff like that and eats the same food. I don't do that shit. That's fucking bullshit. I went to like you know, I've been to other places. I like I went to um, I went to like New Orleans. I mentioned earlier in the podcast, and so I had to go to Popeyes and taste the authenticity of Louisiana. That's how I roll, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's another chicken place down there. <laughs> really? They have different ones besides Popeyes? Maybe. I, but I, I think the Popeyes in Louisiana know. will be the best Popeyes in the whole If you're planet. from Louisiana, let us know in the comments section below the, if you have tasted any better chicken than Popeyes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's round this out with some more sinister music and finally the most sinister band the of the whole sinister. thing. Somebody that makes Marilyn Manson seem like a little <laughs> purring pussy seems cat. Like, see, yeah, Man, he make, this band like Marilyn Manson seem like um, what's his name from uh, the band from Canada, uh, the guy from Canada. What's his name? Uh, what's his, I can't think of his name. Cause I'm too drunk. The, the boy, the, the kid. Bo- yes. What's his name? The boy. He's a little kid from Canada. He's uh, really hated from everybody. Justin Bieber. Thank you. Oh. This band, this band makes uh, Marilyn Manson like Justin Bieber. We're talking about Cradle of Filth. <laughs> uh, Kryptonian, nah. Is it Kryptoniana or Kryptonia? Let's let's take a look at this together. We're gonna we're gonna piece this together. Kryptor, Crypt- re, ah, Crip. It's Crypt- sinister as fuck, man. Kryptor. <laughs> we're gonna get this right. Folks. I'm trying to look it up. It's not working. All right, so we're going to go Kryptonia. The, 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 the Kryptonite of, the album. <laughs> Kryptonite. <laughs> Kryptoriana, yeah. the seductiveness of decay. <laughs> we're talking about Cradle of Filth, the English extreme metal band who formed in 1991. And they are known for a combination of dark goth and black metal with symphonic thematics. And the band has been through 20 musicians, but... Singer Danny Filth still remains as the only original member. That is That's his thing. birth name, actually. Okay. Uh, this la- latest album, so it, it was a sign. Da- Daniel Filth. He had no choice but to join yeah. this man. Uh, I wonder if he had to even rehearse for it. They saw his name, but you're hired. Yeah. <laughs> um, this latest album is the group's 12th release, 
and from the title, it shows that the band is in infusing Victorian goth into their sound. Now, my background on Cradle of Filth is very limited, so I'll get out the way right now. I've seen pasty white kids in high school wearing like the t-shirts, including the controversial Jesus is a cunt. Oh, that's my favorite. Shirt, which depicts a, a nun masturbating, though it's very tasteful. Don't get it wrong. Um, also, I've heard the fifth album, Damnation in a Day. I remember it had a very glossy, atmospheric metal sound, especially with the opera elements, but I only enjoyed random moments on that album. Uh, so what do you think of the, the band, Drew? What was your... My history of Cradle of Filth goes back to um, Cruelty and the Beast, which is uh, musically pretty high regarded from what I understand, but the production is fucking terrible. And I actually went back and listened to it after I listened to this album. Uh -huh. It's You could barely hear what's going on on it, but it has some great moments. Uh, I also listened to Midian when I was a kid and from The Cradle to Enslave. They kind of lost me um, a little bit later on after that with uh, Nymphetamine and... Uh, when they kind of started blowing up a little bit. Um, I think I was kind of, again, like how I outgrew Marilyn Manson. I yeah. outgrew Cradle of Filth. Um, overall, I think they're a pretty decent band, though. Um, if you throw on uh, some Cradle of Filth, uh, you know, you can't really go too wrong with them. Uh, they don't put out bad stuff ever, really, I feel like. Um, and I personally, I'm not a big true black metal uh, fan. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not that into like you know the norwegian stuff where it's just like basically punk rock with face paint um <laughs> yeah and it's like really i like overproduced black metal i like stuff with keyboards and like this band soaring vocals sort of like. yeah yeah this this stuff is fun it's like yeah. halloween <laughs> you know uh obviously the first track uh uh what is it exquisite uh torment awaits is more of like an introduction song that gives you like a taste of what's to come because it's a two minute uh, opener featuring Once you know like, what you're in for it features like a death metal riffs growling vocals aggressive like drumming um it also has a a, a seance like choir and background keyboards it's very eerie uh but after the first song you've pretty much heard everything this album has to offer i think uh what do you think that's <laughs> true yes exactly <laughs> uh it's kind of like that yeah the rest of the album is, is more of the same but dragged out into like on average six to seven minute tracks um, um i wouldn't disagree with you okay so great i where, feel like uh, I, I feel like whereas august burns red it was more the same in every song but it was like when is this gonna end yeah cradle filth for me was more the same on every song i was like this is kind of fun so that's I don't get you, Drew, because I'm just like, there's only eight songs on this album, but the monotony makes it feel like an attorney in hell um, on one listen. But maybe that was the point. <laughs> I don't know. Um, now I have a fondness for power metal bands like the band uh, Dragon Force. I love them. Um, well, I don't love my I have fondness for them. So I don't mind epically long songs. But unlike Cradle of Filth, their songs are more soothing to the ear. Um, one factor could be... Yeah, Dragon Force is kind of exhausting. Well, I think the problem with... The thing about Dragon Force, what they have over this band is the vocals. Uh, that, where his vocal is like... He has this angelic voice of any hair metal singer from the 80s. Like, Danny Phil sounds like a cross between, like, the singer of Type Negative and Starscream from uh, the Transformers. <laughs> this, I feel like there's a connection only you made. <laughs> but uh, I feel like that's, uh, you know, reasonable. I've, yeah. Best example is the song Achingly Beautiful. Like, he switches from, like, either the baritone gothic voice to I just got burned by scolding hot water scream. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's just like, you know, that's just all you're going to. Well, he doesn't. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to knock his vocals. That's what the, the music calls for. But on the ears, like, for, like, a whole over an hour, like, I just can't fuck with this so much that much longer. Like, you know, am I crazy? Am I crazy for being like that? Like, what do you <laughs> well, think? Well, I mean, the, you're, this is coming from the man that just said that his favorite music is thrash metal, so yeah. it's unsurprising. Mm. Ah, so um, some songs, like, uh, Wester... Uh, Visper, Visper team, and God, uh, they're just killing, killing you with these Victorian words. Yeah, I know. 
And the seductiveness of Decay, like you said, have like some cool thrash metal parts, like you said, which is harkening back to the early days of Slayer. But the memorable moments are few and far between. When I'm actually hoping for some cliche blast beats, there is a fucking problem. Because <laughs> I'm so fucking sick of blast beats. But this band rarely does it. But when they do it, I'm like, thank God for some blast beats. <laughs> I like some uh, symphonic metal and the female vocals on the song of Vengeful Spirit. But like, but like every song on this album, it gets old halfway through. I'm just bored. Um, but you say that you are okay with black metal in a way. Um, the only black metal I like is like Living Color, like Body Count. <laughs> but you can tell me more. Literally black yeah, metal. Yeah. What? I I can't fuck with this shit. It's just like I don't know. I feel like it's um, it's annoying because it's hurting my head. Like after it's a while. not something I could ever really sit down and just listen to. Period. Right. Yeah. I mean, at least not at the age I'm at because mm-hmm. there's better stuff to listen to. I remember listening to Cruelty and the Beast uh, you know, back to back when I was like 14. Mm. Um, but now I feel like there's my musical palette has expanded and there's better stuff to listen to. Um, that being said, I could totally put this on and like do something else. I think that it's yes, more agree, a yeah. an atmosphere that they portray because they're going to find better black metal bands you're going to find better death metal bands you're going to find better power metal bands any sort of things that they can do you there's better out there but they don't have that cradle of filth atmosphere which is so weird because nobody really sounds quite like them and considering they have it's weird uh considering they've had so many members that they've somehow been able to sound the same for mm. t- 25 years or however long it's been yeah they are a gateway band so basically just listen to them and he, to lead you to the path to something better um so i'm gonna say they can label themselves as symphonic goth or black metal all they want but to me they sound like stagnant metal they sound almost the same as they did seven albums ago when i listened to them uh perhaps their genre doesn't leave them much room to like grow I will say, with Halloween p- approaching, this would set the mood, like Drew was saying, for like you know a party to play in the background. This is a perfect background band. Just put the shit on, like you know, before the kids come trick or treating stuff like that. But you only really need to listen to this album once a year. That's it. Um, other than that, it's not worth your time. So I say skip it. Um, I disagree. Okay, you say it's fuck this. I'm gonna push the button right now. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead tell me why i'm wrong um i actually i waffled back and forth between download and buy but ultimately this i think this album fulfills on all of its promises uh whether or not it's the strongest of the cradle of filth catalog um it's epic it's overproduced it's sweeping uh it's metal music with gothic overtones and imagery I'd say light some candles, throw this record on, <laughs> crack open a Clive Barker book, and you'll be thoroughly entertained this Halloween season. Buy it. All right. So you say buy it, but before we tell, ask you guys what you think, how can you say that, Drew, if you're saying that the album is more of a background band? Why pay the money for this album and have it in your collection that you're going to only go back to just to not even pay attention to, to do something different? Why does it rank that high? Well, you can open up a Clive Barker book and read it in silence, but that's not as fun <laughs> as opening up a Clive Barker book and reading it with Danny Felth going, "Yeah!" You're gonna feel like you're you're really in the book. Yeah, if you want to hear those, yeah, you can just listen to, like the Who or something like that. Just watch the opening theme to like that that TV. You're show. completely out of your element of this review. <laughs> it's amazing. You are so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> I'm out of my helmet, Donnie. <laughs> so, let us know what you think in the comments. What you think of the latest cr- Cradle of Filth album? I really hope this is it for this band. <laughs> What's your opinion of it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? And tell us what your rating would be as well. All right, we got through all our reviews. Let's get back into Halloween before we get out of here. Um, yes. <laughs> The audience <laughs> loves it. We love it. <laughs> now, what I wanted to do, guys, for fun is um, we're talking about Halloween parties coming up. So I wanted to give you guys some suggestions for what you guys should play for movies and for music before. Let me set the stage. All You're right. expecting people. you dressed as a uh, slutty armchair or whatever. <laughs> You're dressed as a slutty uh, clown Pennywise. <laughs> You're dressed as a sexy beer bottle. <laughs> and, a, and a sexy... Uh, uh, Deadpool, or is that too late? To yeah, do, do sexy Deadpool. Yeah, 
Mm. You're getting you're getting your party ready. Yeah, so now we're getting at the uh, early hours of the night. Now it's around six or seven o'clock. So you want to put some a, a movie on for in the background and have different movies playing throughout the night. But the the trick is you gather movies that are not only like you know, not too distracting, but at the same time someone will look at it and you have people in one room watching movies. You have people in another room, which is usually the kitchen, like just eating the food and talking and shit like that. And you got people outside doing cigarette breaks, but most and importantly, you got people in your bedroom having sex, and then yeah. you're gonna find a, a disgusting mess in the next morning. And you're gonna sleep on the wet spot, right? And then you have a, a, a murder that happens at some point in the evening, you know. And then it turns Street. into a murder mystery. Yeah, <laughs> who killed Clue. Colonel Mustard? So yeah, put on Clue. No, I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so I I made a list of movies that you guys should have playing in the background, and people and if, can walk in and. And watch. if you don't mind, I'm gonna. Um, Give alternates if I can. All right. I'm going to see how good your I list is. I appreciate that, man. That's cool. So 7 o'clock hour. I would suggest you got a lot of the older people there. Like you got your – if you are if you hang out with your parents, we're like that. They still You've come. invited your grandparents over as you're dressed as a sexy grandparent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my, my, my rating my, – my choice for that is either you can play um, Jaws – or Night of the Living Dead, which I know you drew. You're a fan of that movie, or you can put on the movie Psycho because you get the first time to see Vince Vaughn play a different role. So I would say, that. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, you're laughing. You made me laugh. Cause you, <laughs> is there another that, that joke? Was, <laughs> that was a slow bird. Yeah, <laughs> not too slow because you laughed like maybe two seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kind of kidding you guys. You gotta play the old school psycho movie. Don't put that fucking bullshit on. You want people to actually stay at your party. So, <laughs> so yeah. So those three movies are a good pick for the seven o'clock hour. Now, after that's done, we get more to the nine o'clock hour where the kids are still awake. So, what you want to put on is a movie. Um, real quick, go ahead. I disagree with Jaws. That's a summer movie. Uh, okay, but it's but you can pick from the other two then. Psycho or Night Night of the Living Dead. That's pretty good. Okay, that's good enough. So we're taking Jaws off and putting those two movies on. Put the Psycho, not the Vince Vaughn version, because you laugh at me for that. <laughs> or do them both. Do them back to yeah. back. Or if you have two TVs, put them on at the same time. They sync up. <laughs> yeah, they do. It's like <laughs> like the Wizard of Oz and shit, like uh, Pink Floyd. Uh, so nine o'clock. Uh, you want to get some stuff for the kids because they're still awake. Um. And this is not exactly the same time. You can start your party at five or, or six, but this is the, the order you go through. Nine o'clock, I finally decided you should go with the either the movie um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space or the movie Spaced, in, Spaced Invaders and call it a Roy Danio double feature. Now, who is Roy Danio, you might ask? He's, I might ask that. He is the old man in both films. Uh, Killer Clowns Matter Space. He was the old guy with the dog, and uh, he eventually gets shot with the uh, the gun and turned into like cotton candy. Space Invaders is about like these uh never heard of this movie. aliens that mistakenly they were in a war in Mars, and they act in this small town called Big Bean was playing the uh, War of the Worlds on their radio station as a tribute to Halloween. And they were trying to find a signal of where to go for the war, and they actually pick up that signal and fly to that you know town, and then they, they try to take it over. It's really campy. Oh it's man, really somebody's silly. getting fired for that fuck up. And and kids will love this movie, Space Invaders. It's actually really hard to like just go to the um, red box and find, but I actually found that it's actually playing in its entirety on YouTube. So just type in Space Invaders, and you'll watch that whole movie right there. And Roy. Danny O, the old man, is in that movie as well. Typecasted as hell. He has a dog as well in that movie, and he sees the aliens, stuff like that, but he does... Um, I'm not going to spoil what happens to him at the end. Now the kids are asleep. More people are coming to the party. They're talking and shit like that. The they're old start- people and the, the sexy old people have gone home. Yeah, they've gone home. The kids have gone to sleep. Now we got the kids that are uh, more your age, and now it's time for some, like, you know, more adult films so i narrowed it down to two films you could play at the 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock hour i would go with either cabin fever or piranha 3d the remake i fucking love cabin fever me too man you ever see piranha 3d the uh the first piranha movie with no it looked really shitty it's really uh is really entertaining there's lots of nudity 
uh, there's a lot of carnage when the when the piranhas take over. This is not the original from the seventies, the remake. Do you recommend uh, the two D version or the three D version? You can just put the two D version on. They call it three D because it was three D in the theater. And there's a nice, aw- awesome scene where someone's dick gets bitten off and it's floating in in the water. Uh, I love dicks getting bitten dick, off. You love dicks floating in the water in 3D, and then the piranha eats it. But uh, obviously, if you don't have a 3D television, you're not going to see that. Um, Get your 3D dicks on. Go yes. piranha 3D. People are going to be like, this is movies awesome when it comes to cabin fever. Um and the tr- the trick to horror movies with like this, you don't want a really cerebral film where you have to focus on it, or um, you just need moments yeah. that you can come back to, like oh shit, there's a dick floating on the yeah, TV, exactly, or like some ladies shaving her her leg skin off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With it's and once you watch Kevin Fever when it when it opens and there's like this awkward sex scene uh, between a guy and a girl. Girl is fucking gorgeous, by the way. And she's putting his her finger in his ass. You're like, let me keep watching this movie. Like, this is fucked up. Um, and it will definitely. I love horror movies that make you afraid of a finger in the ass, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> or uh, of what happens again. Can we talk about the the most cringeworthy scene? The exactly. scene that will you'll watch it, and uh, if you are uh, of the. Um, interested in females persuasion yeah um it'll make you never want to have foreplay again oh, yeah 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 the, i know the, what you're uh, talking about yeah finger bang misfire finger bang. yeah as it yeah. were she t- he totally missed her 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 area though so it's bad yeah. too and started started fingering that flesh wound <laughs> yes yes um well i feel some squishiness i'll just keep going <laughs> it's it's wet and it's warm yeah and it is a wound on her leg yes so pick one between those two movies you might not have time for both but uh, and then now, eleven o'clock hour, people are drunk. Oh, getting a, it's, getting it, fucked up. It's crazy. So now, since we, what you said is the what the fuck moment of the evening. This is the time when there's five people left, and yeah. then you're like, you guys want to see something fucked up? Yeah. Now it's time to pick, pull out the gore. Which one to pick out is something that's gory as shit. And people are a lot of people are putting on like you know zombie strippers or like teeth. But I, I feel like say, we could do better than that. And also um. Everyone has seen the movie uh, Human Centipede, so they know what it is about. And, and it's also seen, boring as shit. Yeah, and if you haven't seen the Human Centipede, you know what the story's about, so you're not going to be shocked at it. At That's all. the um, new August Burns Red album of horror movies, <laughs> where you listen to it, or you watch it halfway through, and you're like, is this thing still fucking on? Yeah, so my pick for the What the Fuck films is the movie by the great director, uh, um, what's his name, uh, from... Lord of the Rings, whatever. It's Peter Jackson, before he got all Hollywood on yes. us, he used to do older movies like uh, Meet the Feebles, which I've been trying to finish, but it's so fucked up movie. Um, but he did a movie called Dead Alive in, I would say, 1992. The goriest zombie movie, movie ever. Possibly the goriest horror movie of all time. This is also the only movie in my entire life that I watched it, it finished, and then I immediately started it again. <laughs> wow. So um, a lot of people will say like Evil Dead is gory, but this fucking amps that shit up to like 20. This is like, hey, oh, the Evil Dead, that's a pretty good movie. Mm. We could do better. Yeah. Now, what I wanted to do actually to prepare for this to make sure I was correct, all the movies I've listed are easy to, to um, access on, you know, different apps on your on your TV, like, you know, Hulu or Amazon, the thing like that. Dead Alive, I can't fucking find that movie. You gotta, you gotta buy the DVD. You, gotta, you have no choice but to buy it. Like but a fucking you've actually, savage. You actually seen it? I've only seen clips. Now, what, what a would Dead you, Alive? Yeah. Oh what would you God. say is what makes the movie so great besides the gore? Is it a good story as well? There isn't much story. Um, mm-hmm. There's a, a monkey uh, in Sumatra that uh, they find and bring to New Zealand. Yeah. And it has some sort of zombie disease that it carries with its bite. And this guy, they put it in a zoo. For some fucking reason, yeah. And then uh, it bites this guy's mother, this over this guy's overbearing mother, and then she turns into a zombie, and he's trying to keep her zombiness a secret from everybody, and it's not working because there's people coming over to see. <laughs> to I, I can't remember why they can, but like some people from the town come over, and he's like serving them food, and then it's it's just. Every time he tries to stop one zombie, another zombie is created, and it's just a comedy of errors. Yeah. And then there's also a priest that has karate, that knows karate, and then uh, 
ends up fucking a nurse, <laughs> and they have a baby zombie. It's just nuts. Okay. So there's there's very little story. The story that's there is just to service the 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 gags. Now that's why this movie works so well. So now, because now at the, at the one o'clock hour, people are drunk and not focusing on shit. So you need a movie that you can't pay attention to. But once you need a hundred zombies in a single room, and then a guy with a lawnmower going yeah. through them. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that is my pick for the horror movies. Now, if we want to get to like you know music. Um, oh, before you go, can okay, I go can I can I throw out one for um for the the fucked up ones? Yeah, uh, sticking with the if you can't get the DVD in time, if if it's back order on Amazon or whatever, because we know fucking Best Buy doesn't sell DVDs anymore. God damn yeah, it. they sell Blu-rays and shit. Um, shit or VHS. I'm gonna say sign up for Shutter. They got uh, it's a horror movie streaming service. Mm-hmm. It it's pretty much. Even if you don't take our recommendations, you're going to find something you're going to want to watch on there for yeah. Halloween. And then you, if you really want to, you can cancel it because I got a free trial. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go for the fucked up ones, either Faces of Death. Wow. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Um, one? Or are you just going to do the first? They have the first one on there. And that's, I think, after you watch Dead Alive or the other one I'm going to recommend, you put that on and then that clears the place out because there's like <laughs> animals getting killed and like footage from a slaughterhouse and like a monkey gets a, a fake monkey actually they eat the, the uh, brain like it's a like indiana jones or some shit but the turtle was real that's kind of a holocaust okay. which is oh, also on my shutter bad, my bad my bad i mix them up um and then the other one would be uh in kind of the same vein as human centipede but a lot more interesting necromantic mm-hmm. um it's essentially just a couple they end up having sex with uh, dead bodies because they're really morbid and they collect bodies and stuff, <laughs> body parts. A yeah. guy finds a corpse, brings it home. The wife decides that she likes the corpse more and leaves him with a uh, takes right. the corpse and leaves. <laughs> so put that one on to spice up your Halloween party. All right, awesome. So we got the movies now. You go to another room and you got like the uh, music playing. Which I prefer. It's better not play the actual music. Like if you want to not not do like you know movies, just put on your TV, YouTube, make a playlist of horror mo- uh, Halloween movies, which I've done. I'm not gonna give you everything because you gotta have like five hours of music playing. But do the traditional stuff, you know, Monster Mash, you no know, Thriller, stuff like that. But some songs I actually like that are like not in the same like you know not as trendy. Do some grave diggers or like Flatliners. I'll put like these songs like videos in the links below. Uh, Grave Diggers, you know, I'll post a video for that. Flatliners, they're both horror core hip hop bands. Want to go some like metal stuff, of course. And we've been talking about this this guy all night. Do some Manson. My pick from Manson would be like something like Turner Kit would be a good video, or something by Body Count. A good song from Body Count a video is uh, the song um, "Here I Go Again." I'll put that down there. This is from the new album that came out this year. Uh, you want to get some some punk rock videos, um, Ramones. Um, you know, Pet Cemetery do that on, or Necromantics, they're like a rockabilly, psychobilly band. They got a song called um, uh, Gargoyles Over Copenhagen, because they're, they're Danish. Put that on. If you want to go for more like, you know, R&B or pop stuff, the video from Rihanna, Disturbia, or I hate to say it, but the Backstreet Boys song, Backstreet's Back, <laughs> is uh, really creepy. Put that on. So you got a lot of stuff to choose from. I think you're missing two obvious ones. What? What am I missing? Typo Negative and The Misfits. Are they have videos, though, or just songs? Oh, yeah. Typo Negative vi- videos are great. Uh, okay. Black Number One would be a, a good one, especially since that song is like eight minutes long. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, shit. What's the, the name Misfits of the one? Song? I can't think of their videos, though. I knew that <sighs> um, other one. Oh, the Graves Era Misfits. There, there was one video uh, that was uh, where he's like singing in a, a graveyard. Um, Dig up her bones. Okay, that was the Misfits one that you should put on. And um, the other type of negative one, I th- can't remember. I think it's Everything Dies. There's a video where where it's like really creepy and one of my favorite songs by them, by the way, because they do the kind of uh, thrash metal I love. But um. Yeah, so that's the party right there. Do you want to have a list or before we want, we want to get to the Halloween stuff? I think you covered it pretty well. All right, so um, we're going to get to the Halloween stuff right now. Pause. All right, so now we are going to get into the Halloween movies. Um, Drew is going to give Literally the Halloween yes, movies. Literally now. We are going to do, watch at home. Oh, we got to do this now real quick because uh, Halloween. Ah, spooky! <laughs> Halloween, Michael Myers time. The, the the top 
Uh, the Halloween movies have been in a franchise for many years, and thankfully, Rob Zombie was nice enough to revamp the franchise because we've been asking for Just that for so long. Fucking dripping sarcasm right now. <laughs> I don't appreciate it. <laughs> all right, so what you decided to do? I asked him to rank all the Halloween movies, but he decided to do the zombie, the Rob Zombie ones as well. So instead of having eight movies, we're going to do all ten movies. Ten is a nice round number. And he's going to rank them all from ten to one. Now, I actually got to write that down so I can keep track of what you're doing. So you're doing... what are the, the Rob Zombie ones is just called... Did he remake just the first two? He just remade the, the first one, and then uh, he did a sequel to that. Now, the sequel that he did is not the same as Halloween 2? No. Okay. So what is that one? Just a sequel to his uh, remake? It's just Halloween 2. And it's different from Halloween 2. Uh, it's different from the real Halloween 2, yes. Okay. So here we go now, you guys. You guys ready for the, the Drew's ranking? We love the rankings, man. Are we, are we ready out there? <laughs> yes, we love it. All right. So coming in at number 10, what do you got? Could there be any other movie? Halloween Resurrection. Wow. It's that bad? It is that bad. Listen, I saw, you know, bits and pieces. I've probably seen the entire movie. Uh, on cable just in bits and pieces so in uh, an effort to have journalistic integrity I actually sat down and watched it it was Mm -hmm. on stars uh, this weekend it was a really bad fucking movie Um, first off but you got Buster Rhymes (laughs) well that's that's part of the problem I'm gonna get to that okay not Buster Rhymes he's great (laughs) but (laughs) but he's there's no point all right I'm go getting ahead. off track. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm so mad right now. <laughs> uh, okay, so the movie is essentially over in the first 10 minutes. Oh, really? The movie starts out. They explain the history of Michael Myers. As if you need that fucking shit explained. <laughs> uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is sitting in a, an insane asylum getting ready for his return. He shows up and and kills her. And then, that, then the movie starts. That's the pre- Titled. Was uh, that a spoiler? Now we didn't. I didn't know Jamie Lee Curtis. You know what? It. Maybe it is. But fuck you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to see this movie. Okay. You don't. Spoilers don't matter. All this right. is. This is. Uh, Post spoilers. There's no. There's I should no, have prevented if guys out there. There's spoilers in this movie. It's okay with you guys. Go ahead. And then he just goes back to his home. <laughs> and what? it's like, well, nobody cares. What What are you gonna do there, asshole? <laughs> In, and in real life, he would have gone back to his home and just sat there. I don't like. <laughs> but then Buster Rise film film crew is there, which like I, the whole point. Like, okay, so they they did H two O, which also wasn't a great movie. We'll get to but, that. Where that and is, we'll and that. we'll get to that. Yeah. But it it served its purpose. Mm. And then it that had a sequel, which was the first ten minutes of this movie, and there there was an inexplicable hour and 15 of just him killing random people in his old house mm-hmm. so Buster Rhymes film crew is there and Buster Rhymes is great he he's not a good actor by any stretch of the imagination but he's fun at yeah. least everybody else in this movie is fucking pointless yeah there the, you have all the character archetypes people start having sex for no reason there's all of them have sex in horror movies <laughs> yeah they, because they have to yeah because that that was called for that was the because they they just hook up there's two people two random people just decide to hook up because they're filming a reality show and i guess that's just what fucking happens there's no point to any of it okay and then buster rhymes is walking around in a michael myers costume because he's got to scare these people for his reality show <laughs> flip mode in the squad <laughs> Yeah, I got the mask Basically, on. There's a scene where he sh- chews out Michael Myers because he thinks he's somebody else on the crew, also dressed up as Michael Myers. And he's like, "Listen, punk, I'm Michael Myers. I'm the one doing this. You need to get the fuck out of here." It's like a, it's not a small scene. It, the scene goes on for like a minute and a half, where he's just yelling at Michael Myers and telling him to fuck off. Yeah. And then Michael Myers is just fucking standing there. I'm supposed to be scared of a guy that got chewed out by Buster Rhymes? Are you serious? <laughs> well, that's gonna get to what you're gonna say about slash movies at the end of this thing, but. So that's the number it, 10. It truly, it capped off the entire series because at that point, the series had become <laughs> just absurd and pointless. And this is just, just like the end. Like They were like, we need to kill this beast. Yeah. We need to put a stake through its heart. Let's make Halloween Resurrection. Okay, so number nine. That being said, it was 
fairly progressive. Oh, it was okay. <laughs> progressive. Uh, uh, yeah, because Buster Rhymes and Tyra Banks uh, own their own film studio, and they're trying to make a TV show. Black owned film studio can't in two thousand two. Can't forget Tiger Tyra Banks' this movie before her uh, t- TV show, I guess. And this was kind of uh, pre the reality boom. I feel like okay, okay. it was almost like proto YouTube before um, before the Jersey Shore, I guess. So it had that going for it. It was yeah. very progressive, and and saw ahead. Number nine. Number nine is Halloween two. Not the Halloween two you're thinking of. The Rob Zombie Halloween two. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't, I don't know what what, I, what. what the fuck is this movie? I, I don't, don't know what it is either. I never heard of it. I don't. I, I don't <laughs> know what the point of it. So the the first his remake of Halloween was decent, um, and then they decided to do a sequel to it because you know it made money. I guess. Mm. Um, and I kind of I saw it when right around the time it came out, like once it was on DVD, and it's just a clusterfuck. <laughs> it there's, there's the best kind of fucks, yeah. Like he, she, you know the um, the sister, uh, the Jamie Lee Kurt, Kurt, the character Jamie Lee Curtis played Laurie Strode. Mm-hmm. I couldn't think of the name. Um, she's like, you know, just dealing with the. Uh, PTSD of being stalked by Michael Myers and then it's just intercut with weird dream sequences for no fucking reason Mm -hmm. and then it's over that's that's the end (laughs) all right um and then but then I saw Lords of Chaos uh which he did after this and it kind of made sense because he was trying to fuck around with psychological horror but he's a schlock guy (laughs) and he couldn't understand how to do it yeah so this was kind of training wheels the psychological horror for him so it wasn't as bad as the devil um not uh, the other movie the uh Hundred thousand corpses, but you know it's right up there with the no. It was worst film. it's it's his worst movie. I think. Okay. I thought House of a Thousand Corpses was great. It's we will debate why I hate that movie oh, and love the sequel oh a lot more. I can't. Later. I can't wait. But everyone tells me I love loving the sequel to that movie. I'm on the right track, but I should appreciate the older one more. What's number eight for this Halloween franchise? Number eight is Halloween H two O, and um, I think that this movie is. Um, it's got LL it's, Cool J's sexy lips, man. How can you not knock, knock it? It's the return of something for 20 years. I feel years. like LL Cool J was kind of... Between this and Deep Blue Sea, yeah. he was the har- harbinger of... Grabbing straws. Crappy yeah. uh, movies. You, you knew you knew if LL Cool J was in it. Yeah. That to, to keep your expectations low. Um, it's not a bad movie. It just seems like it's it was trying to sponge off of what was happening in horror at the time. It's... I've watched it not too long ago, and it just seems so dated. Josh Hartnett is in it with his fucking weird '90s haircut, yeah. and, and that's when he just, was doing mad horror films in the late '90s. And the the the, mu- the the dialogue is just trying too hard to be clever. It's very much a post scream movie, right? Yeah, and it's just kind of all right. Yeah, it's okay. it's you know whatever. Is it um does it tie into the original being that Jamie Lee Curtis returned for it? Yeah, it actually ignores all of the weird movies that happened after Halloween too. Wow, that's fucked up, man. They should really keep it going. All right, so what's number seven then? I'm gonna go uh, Halloween five, Revenge of Michael Myers. Okay, Re- number seven is that one. Uh, all right, so is that when he got his revenge? Why you didn't like it? <laughs> I feel like he's been been getting his revenge. That's a weird <laughs> title, subtitle, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it, it kind of, like, Halloween 4 happened, and it was just all right. Uh, you know, it was fine. Um, it was a little bit tense. It had its moments. Halloween 5, it doesn't really justify its existence. Mm. Um, I feel like, um, it's kind of a lot like Halloween H2, or, uh, yeah, Halloween H2O, where it's just like, it's just there. It's not bad. (laughs) It's not good. It's just whatever. Okay. All right. So, uh, what's number six then? Uh, number six, kind of. Okay. So, number five. Uh, spoiler alerts for this one. Okay. Um, at the end of number five, you find out that there is this weird cult that is somehow involved with Michael Myers, right? Mm, cults. And number six delivers on that promise. Uh, it um, goes behind the cult and what the cult's about, and it's kind of batshit crazy. So number um, six, number six, number six is number six. <laughs> okay, the curse of Michael Myers. Okay, yes. Um, it it actually isn't Halloween six. It's just Halloween Curse of Michael Myers because yeah. once they get up to like five, you know, number five or number yeah. six in horror <laughs> movies, they start getting embarrassed yeah. and they're like, we can't put the number on there. People will think we're we're fucking milking uh, a horse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> it's it's weird. 
um it's baffling it's but it's also kind of interesting okay mm-hmm. um it's not particularly scary but it's just kind of you watch it and just marvel at how did this get made <laughs> um it's it's got a young paul rudd in it so oh man before, if you want to wow, yeah if you want to cl- clueless yeah wow. okay it gives you uh, kind of a insight into um the man who will ru- one day rule movies <laughs> and Ant man himself where he man came from. all right so that was number six number six what's number five then Number five is number four. <laughs> <laughs> Return of Michael Myers. Okay. Um, this movie's all right. Now uh, the re- that, that, that title is uh, aptly named because, you know, we'll get into it later, but he was gone for one of the they movies. They cut him out returned. for one of the movies. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad movie. They they tried really hard to make it as, as creepy and as, a, as tense as the original Halloween, and they kind of failed, but mm. it's all right. I... I one of the reasons I put it so high on the list uh, was I have fond memories of getting ready to go out on Halloween and watching AMC's Halloween marathon while I was getting my costume ready and stuff um, when I was a kid, um, which is, you know, makes me like it a little <laughs> bit more. What is uh, the, why did he return in that one? Because of, uh, it, it made sense for the franchise or is there a real deeper meaning? Um, you find out he has a, a niece. And he's got he's his family to him is like Pokemon. Just got to kill them all. Okay. All right. So what is number four then? Number four is the Halloween remake with Rob Zombie. Okay. When he, when he first brought that back, cause we were, you know, ache, ache, aching for it. But I think I'm I'm the only uh, you know how the original Halloween didn't need to get remade. I'm mm-hmm. not going to make that argument. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is not obviously not nearly as good as the first one because it's lower on the list for me um but i think i'm in the minority for this the backstory that he gave michael myers was just made him scarier in my opinion no. because he's a psychopath he but, he he has all the the makings of a serial killer he's killing small animals he's ends up killing one of his classmates and it kind of humanizes him almost in a way that makes him scarier because he's a crazy person and he doesn't understand why he's crazy and being away from his family and going through all the hardships he went through has made him even colder and uh, into more of a killer. Now, you think slashers need backstories? That's the big argument. Why do we need a backstory for a slasher? Um, I think it depends. I think, case, it I think in this case it was... Not necessary, but fine. I think if they hadn't provided the backstory, it would have been a shit movie. Mm. Because the second half of the movie is essentially just a straight remake of the original Halloween. Okay. Which, again, is... Okay. So, that the thing he has going for is that he did a backstory, and then after that, it's not necessary. (laughs) I, you know, still watch it because it does get... It's a lot gorier than the original Halloween and uh, a lot more intense, I think. Mm -hmm. Um but I mean, it's not really necessary. I think the the prequel element is what's interesting about the the Halloween remake. Oh, it's a prequel. It's not like a well, yeah. The first half of the movie is, is okay. essentially a prequel to, um, like you know how the original Halloween opens up with him killing his sister, and then it cuts to you know twenty years later or whatever it is, yeah. And then it's him coming back the night he came home, yeah. Uh, and that kind of fills in that chunk of time that's missing okay so what would you say is number we're at number three now we're at number three halloween three season of the witch perfect that's fine that's fine i agree with that (laughs) um now this is where drew will argue his point why number three which didn't have michael myers at all, all which is weird to have a franchise starring a person not to have it in it ranked so higher over all these movies that actually had a minute. Well, why is he number three? That's a poor argument. Is why. Is why. That's okay. why. Um, so the first two movies, it's a self-contained story. Michael Myers escapes through the loony bin. He comes home. He tries to kill people. You find out that. Spoiler alert for a fucking movie from 35 years ago. Uh, that his sister is one of the people he's been killing, and that he has this weird, you know, obsession. It was his sled. <laughs> but go on. <laughs> <laughs> this weird obsession with killing his family, uh, and then his psychiatrist, uh, psychologist, whatever Doctor Loomis is, um, 
ends up between him and, and Lori, they end up killing him at the end of the movie, and then it's over, and Dr. Loomis dies in the process. And that's one. First one. That's the first one yeah. and the second one. Oh, it's okay. a self, those two movies are self-contained. Yeah. The, the killer dies at the end. He, you see him die. He's on fire and not moving. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. Um, and then the idea... You know, because the movie made money, it's one of the <laughs> both of them made a ton of ton of money. They can't let it die. Why not? The idea yeah. was that to make it basically an, an anthology. So yeah. each year there would be a new Halloween movie with a new set of characters with a new story. This was wasted potential that people wanted to see Michael Myers. We could have had so many other Halloween themed horror movies, and it would have been great. But people are like, "No, oh, I want Michael Myers." And what I find so interesting is that the big thing right now in tv is anthology horror series where each season is self-contained and then the next season is a new story with new characters why was it a problem when they tried to do this 30 some years ago but now it's like the hottest coolest thing and everybody loves it well the answer to that and then today just to you know Mm. just to you know, uh, kind of formulate what I'm trying to say here mm. is th- the same people that love things like American Horror Story are the ones that are going to be like, oh, I don't like the third Halloween because it doesn't have Michael Myers. Mm. Like, continue. Well, that was my answer because uh, we're talking about a film that established that we're going to have this guy in every single movie or this killer slasher film. Now you're talking about TV shows where they start, they go from jump saying like, you know, this season Black Mirror and the one you mentioned is different things. And Black Mirror does it better. Black Mirror is more like a Twilight Zone style. But, um, I mean, specifically like um, American Horror American Story Horror, or uh, yeah. True Detective, things like that, where it's yeah. like it's the same name, but it's a different story. Yeah. But like movies, you can't fuck around with when you have like this is the killer, now the sequel. But they killed the there. killer in the second one. Yeah. But similar to Saw. Um, the killer is mentioned in the movies, even though he died in the th- in the third one. I think that with Saw, it's a little bit different because you're specifically talking about the Jigsaw killer. This, if if they did like Saw, wh- which one did he die in? Was that the third, third one that he one, died? Yeah. If Saw Four was just like a completely different story, it's kind of weird because Saw is specific is about the jigsaw killer this is just halloween Uh, if it was michael myers then that would be (laughs) michael myers 3 is michael myers return uh season of the witch that's fucking weird but this is just halloween it's just uh, a um holiday themed movie so the the executive boardroom saw a potential because in 1978 they called it Halloween. They had a loophole. That's yeah, and, and and the funny thing is when John Carpenter was tasked with doing a, a, a horror movie, if I'm not mistaken, they just said, put it on Halloween. And then he came up with the basically what would be slasher movies you know they didn't give say okay we want a a killer that looks like this that's going to be in all these movies like it was just come up with a a a holiday horror movie okay all right so i feel like we know where this is going but we'll do it anyway (laughs) what is your number two halloween franchise film i almost feel and Obviously, Halloween 2 is my, my number two. <laughs> oh, you want to get a beat on the booth. <laughs> but I almost feel like no, uh, Halloween and Halloween 2 are like the same movie. Because Halloween, it kind of I haven't just, seen that one, but go on. It it kind of... It ends in kind of a cliffhanger, the first one. Mm. And I was blown away uh, because I when I was a kid, obviously, these movies had been out forever. Mm. Um, I saw them like back to back. You know, I remember... I could, was like 12 years old and watching them on it was like USA or TNT or something mm-hmm. around Halloween and it was like they played Halloween on a Monday night and then played Halloween 2 on a Tuesday night so it was like come back tomorrow for the continuation and yeah. then I was blown away to find out that the second one was just a sequel mm-hmm. I can't the, the brass balls on John Carpenter for being like oh yeah the killer's still out there see ya like that's that's it where he gets shot and then like yeah, yeah. ends up getting up and walking away and it's just like where the fuck is he yeah goodbye roll credits like that's it like that's crazy to me (laughs) that it's like the second one is really uh like the second 
half of the first movie almost i feel like all right um, so, so it's weird really, it's weird ranking them but i'm gonna have to say that the second one comes in in second you got you really got me curious now because i think the the first one ends perfectly which we're gonna say is your number one right now yeah the first one's in the the best halloween movie ever made but i thought that one ended perfectly where i don't care like i thought <laughs> it was perfect and now you're telling me that the second one is just as good hold up <laughs> <laughs> you, you were complaining about Michael Myers not being in the third one, but now you don't care about it, what happens to him after the first one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you're logically inconsistent. I'm just saying, like, why is... I'm not saying I don't like Season of the Witch, but I, I just thought that was ballsy, like you said the word before, of the make a sequel and not have the main character in it. But you're saying... Oh, yeah, it was you, ballsier. You, right? rank, you, you ranked it so high, which... um. I think nowadays with time is why they people put it's, season it's, the witch. I think so it's come high. around. Yeah. I think people were so far away from the initial like where the fuck Knee is Michael Myers? Reaction, yeah. yeah, that it's like oh this is kind of a weird fun creepy movie with yeah. like gore and like it's it's just got everything in it. Yeah, it's the sort the story is fucking batshit and like it's kind of creepy and it's like a very slow kind of. Um, like almost like a slow burn of a what's the tv scene in that movie that everyone talks about there's a tv scene in the third one uh something about something coming out on the television or something on a television um well i can i can you'll tell me off there but it's a bit of a spoiler all right so tell me off there because i know like people talk about how great that movie is i heard that last year and this and that I was I was fucking with you when you were texting. So you haven't even seen this movie. I'm not only have not God even damn seen it. it, but I think you like, motherfucker. I think like I've heard that the movie is not is 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 really good. But when it's, you were texting me back and forth about that, I was like, it's you, basically a mystery because it starts out, and I don't think I'm giving away much because okay. it's the first scene. It starts out with a guy that's being chased by these other guys into a hospital, and he ends up getting killed by these other guys, and then the guy goes out to his car and sets himself on fire, and the doctor's like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. And it starts investigating, and, and it's like kind of a weird conspiracy that he's come, you know, come into, and then he is just trying to unravel this conspiracy. Um, and it seems to involve this costume company that sells these masks. I'm sorry, I laughed. I'm sorry. And then I know it's it's a weird when you finally find out what's going on with the conspiracy and what's happening with the masks. It all kind of it's just very odd. Like it's it you have to kind of suspend your disbelief, but at the same time, it's also really creepy. Um, the soundtrack is great. Um, it's shot very well. It's very kind of dark and slow, and it comes to an ending where like there's a little bit of gore and like it starts getting intense, and then it's just a good movie. All right, so, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's really far out there, but it's also just kind of fun. So, for me, uh, being that i only seen Halloween 1 and Halloween, uh, I would say, 4, um, <laughs> I can't really argue with your list. It's good, man. I saw Halloween 1, great movie. I saw Halloween 4 when I was in 6th sixth, sixth grade, and I was like, I don't know what the hell's going on, but I saw it in opposite order. So, um, yeah, good list, and I appreciate that you put in the uh, Rob Zombie ones. Sort of, but basically you're saying his his um attempt in the franchise was like futile, like because you put Halloween wait actually no you put Halloween four Halloween one at number four from him, so you think he did a good job with in yeah. the franchise, but the second I think time it was he pretty tried solid. was not worth his time, but <laughs> because the second one and and like I said once I saw Lords of uh not Lords of Chaos Lords of uh, Salem, okay. um. I kind of got what he was trying to do with Halloween 2, and he fucked it up. Like, Because okay. Lords of Salem was very psychological, and um, it was very, like, kind of a supernatural... had a supernatural element, which was new to him, mm. n- new for him, and he just didn't know how to make it interesting and scary. And I thought Lords of Salem was a pretty good movie, and I thought Halloween 2 was a pretty shitty movie, <laughs> and that's why I said the Halloween 2 is kind of training wheels for his lords of salem all right you guys so thanks for listening this is a good podcast this is a good uh list and um we are going to get out of here now thanks for listening to all our ratings and all our halloween stuff 
Happy Halloween, everybody. And here we go with the outro stuff. I want to say thank you, Drew, for coming out for the podcast. What's that sound? Psychedelic, man. Just play all that stuff when we get out of here, man. Let's keep pushing the button when we get out of here. All right. So thanks for listening to the podcast, you guys. Happy Halloween, everybody. And here's where you can get in touch with us. We'll be doing a show uh, next month. Getting ready for uh, Thanksgiving. Hopefully by then it's a lot more chillier and we get more into the spirit. Just keep it going, man. Keep it going. Keep it going. Here we go. Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. And uh, how's, here's how you can touch with us. Go to our website, ngheberradio.net. Or you can go to uh, our email, which is radio at gmail.com. And you can type your questions, all that. And also, we are on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio. And make sure you're on our Facebook thing. Like us. Um, also, you can go to our um, YouTube page. And when you type in Hybrid Radio, and you find us, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And finally, we are on the Twitters. You can tweet us. Go to at Radio and tweet your comments and everything like that. Until next time, saying happy Halloween from me, Jarrell. Happy Halloween from Jarrell. Have a good night. Yeah.